Good evening, and welcome to the stream. Welcome along, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Uh, uh, I hope the camera and everything. And uh, I never know, never know what to say. Uh, usually, actually, when I used to start live streaming, it used to just be I would be the only one here for about ten minutes, just talking to myself. But hello, oh good, everyone can hear me. Good, that's nice. Welcome, welcome to the stream. I know I'm a very infrequent live streamer, but uh, I like to do it whenever I hit a milestone. And as the title says, it's it's 200,000 subscribers, which is like, yeah, wild. Uh, I, I honestly can't even really process it. Um, I think I stopped really being able to process it around sort of 150,000. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's it's bizarre, but I'm extremely grateful. Um, and uh, every time I meet somebody new, especially in acting, um, and they say, "What do you what do you do? What's the money job like? What what do you, what's the other job?" Because all actors have two jobs. Um, I'm always like, "Well, you know, it's kind of weird. I I am a YouTuber, um, and I'm like totally crowdfunded, and and yeah, it's a uh, it's amazing." So, thank you, everyone. Uh, I have some slow gin here. It's the last of my slow gin. Um, don't want to get too crunk on the live stream because we've got a special guest coming on shortly hopefully if i can get the technology to work otherwise i'm going to look like a right tit but cheers to all of you okay i'll send the i'll send the link um along to the special guest and we'll we'll hope that it works um yeah i'm i'm not always the uh, not always the hottest on the old uh, on the old tech but uh hopefully it'll be good oh somebody i knew that somebody uh, would ask um, on the on the shirt. It says Beifong Metal Bending Academy. It's a reference to um, to Avatar: The Last Airbender. So, just plugging in my just plugging in my headphones here. Um, yeah, cool. Right now, let's wait and see whether the special guest makes an appearance. Who knows? Um, hopefully, they will. Uh, yes, the slow gin is just neat. Um, yeah, bit of, bit of Dutch courage for the for the stream. Dutch courage uh, is an expression in English meaning um, uh, kind of courage through through like alcohol, um, not being nervous because you're drinking. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that's the that's the idea anyway. Um, but yeah, it's it's <laughs> somebody says the special guest is Jordan Peterson. Uh, yeah, yeah, well done, no, well, good guess, guys. It, it actually is. And um, we're going to be talking about all his favorite recipes for cooking lobster all night. That's going to be really really fun. <laughs> Somebody says a little bit louder. You're difficult to hear. No problem. Sorry about that. Uh, I was trying to be sort of soft and and cooling and calming, but uh, I'll I'll speak up a little bit. Um, cool. Well, yeah. Slow gin is really nice. I had it once when I was 17. Says anarchist mugwump. Yeah, it's good. I like it. Right. It's really good stuff. Um... <laughs> oh, I've got a candle just underneath my. I've got a candle just underneath me here. It's just it flickers every time I laugh set my beard on for and a special special haircut and uh and shave just for the um just for the uh, stream somebody says brazil is playing right now but i'm watching you instead of supporting my country oh yeah because it's the world cup at the moment yeah i mean i i i haven't um i haven't really been keeping up with it i don't really follow football all that much um the funny thing is um my my parents used to take me to see the football match when i was a kid in, in newcastle but that was before anybody realized I needed glasses. So uh, I was just sitting in a stadium and I couldn't tell what team anyone was on, was on and I couldn't see the ball. So I was I was convinced that it was all some kind of horrible joke that they were playing on me. And I sat in the stadium and just and just uh, read a book, much to their embarrassment. But yeah. Uh, somebody says, why is it called slow gin? Okay, so maybe I can hold it up to camera. So you can see like, it's not clear like normal gin. It's um it's, it's spelled S-L-O-E. And it's made of, um, made of slow berries. I'm not exactly sure how they make it, but um, yeah, you can just drink it straight up. It, it doesn't really like. I mean, I I can I I drink gin like normal gin straight up sometimes as well. Or at least I used to when I was at uni. Uh, it's been a while, but um, yeah, you can just drink it straight up. It just tastes like juice. It's really really good. Um, yeah. What do you think of the World Cup? I honestly haven't haven't been following it. Um, sorry. Uh, I yeah, slow gin, drink fast. Uh, Poole Danielson says. Yeah, I'm gonna have to drink it slowly because there's there's well, a if you drink it quickly because it tastes like juice, you get pretty drunk pretty fast, and uh, b it tastes really good, so you just knock it back. 
Um, also, I'm a bit of a lightweight at the moment because I, I tried to do this thing this year where I only drank on 12 occasions throughout 2018. And I thought, um, well, yeah, I, I thought like 10 would be too, not, not enough. And like, I, I thought I'd only do it 12 times and save it for special occasions. And that way it kind of means something and I'm not going out and getting drunk um, just for no, for no reason. And uh, I failed, obviously, like within two months, I'd, I'd sort of fallen off the wagon. But um, what, what I did succeed in doing is just massively destroying my alcohol tolerance. So I'm a really, really cheap, I'm a cheap drunk now. I have like two pints and I'm gone. So <laughs> I'm going to be careful. I don't want to get too, uh, too tipsy on the stream. Oh, what team did you know, did my parents support? What football team? Newcastle United, because because uh, I grew up in Newcastle. I was I was born there and lived there for twenty years. Um, so you know, if you pushed me, if you absolutely pushed me, I'd support Newcastle United. Um, but yeah, it's funny. It's it's weird. Uh, every time, every time. So I have two older brothers, and wherever whenever we go on holiday, we always see somebody wearing a Newcastle United football shirt wherever wherever they are in the world. Um, so my brothers and I have this thing where you try and find the Toon fan. The Toon is what they call it. And you try and find a fan wearing the shirt wherever you are in the world, take a picture of them and send it to the other two. And uh, we saw we saw a guy in the in the football strip in in New Zealand once getting off a ferry. And my my brother was in Lahore for uh, for a wedding, and there was a guy in a Newcastle United football shirt just in the street. And my brother was like, "I'm sorry, then this is really weird, but can I get a photo with you? Because you know I'm actually from Newcastle." So yeah, there's there's Newcastle United fans all over the world, and uh, if there's any out there, just just give them some love. Um, yes, it is. It is a well. It's not a Legend of Korra T-shirt. It, it, it's um. Oh yeah, no, I guess it is Legend of Korra. Yeah, because that's when they learn metal bending for for real. I was more into um. I was more into Last Airbender. I, I kind of watched the first season of Legend of Korra and then sort of fell by the wayside a little bit. Um, but yeah, I loved I loved uh, Last Airbender. I thought it was really good. Um, so yeah, I just got I just use it for a gym shirt. Um, because yeah, yeah, it's nice. Um, have you read any Derrida? No, I haven't actually. I probably should. Um, somebody says, "Why did you? Why do you sound so southern? Did you go to school in the south? Watch me get more northern now that you've said that." My voice. I'll. So in acting, they call it code switching, right? Where you just kind of change accents. Um, so I'll watch me code switch now. Uh, but no, the reason is my my parents weren't from Newcastle. So uh, my dad's from Bristol and my mum's from Yorkshire, and uh, they didn't have Geordie accents at home. So uh, I was already speaking by the time I got to school. And uh, just picked up a bit of an accent, um, but it's kind of actually useful for acting because now I live in the south. Um, I can, if I'm in an audition and I need to be more northern, I can kind of go all the way up to like incomprehensible Geordie or all the way into RP, uh, what they call received pronunciation, which is the kind of uh, I think like uh, Ray Fines has that kind of RP voice where it's all sort of quite oh yes, very much a lot of rounded vowels like this. The mouth has to be very tall for RP, whereas you know where I'm from, you'd have a bit more of a wide mouth like that, right? So, um, yeah, it's good. It's cool, cool skill to have. But uh, if I get very angry or very drunk, then I tend to like blip back up and all my, like, tra my accent gets on the train and shoots up back to Newcastle. So, yeah. Um, what's your opinion on the philosophy of Rick and Morty? I did like two videos on Rick and Morty, man. I did videos on Rick and Morty before it was cool. No, uh, I did like, uh, I think I did one. Did I do one either as a collab with PBS Idea Channel or or maybe they were involved in it somehow? I f this is the thing, right? I've been doing YouTube for like five years and I, I can't remember everything that I've done. <laughs> so sometimes people come up to me in, in the street and they're like, oh, yesterday, I just watched your video on that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I made that like three years ago. I'm like, wow, I don't even remember. What did I say? Like, I hope it was good um so yeah it's funny I, I think i've made something like 300 videos at this stage uh th i think it's like 300 and, and like six or something so i actually can't remember all of them um yeah somebody says i've been trying to learn rp because i have an odd non-native accent but it's hard yeah it is i found learning rp tough there was one vowel sound that took me you know, months and months to crack it's um the the vowel in the word uh bird or indeed word um, so where I'm from, I say it like bird. It's kind of er uh, uh sound. Whereas for RP, you have to say bird. That's a bird over there. I flipped the bird to Colin Firth. Whereas I would say I flipped the bird to Colin Firth, right? Uh, so that just took me ages. I kept saying like bird, bird, bird. So um, yeah, it's just just practice really. Um, literally just like drills every day. If you want, if you want to learn the accent, it really really helps out. Um, yeah. Oh, somebody says they watched my. Uh, my Mad Marks series the other day. Yeah, man, that was years ago. 
think I made that back when I was still living in the north. Um, for those who haven't seen it, I made a four-part series on Karl Marx um, ages and ages ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I rewatched it the other day when I was doing the ironing because I was like, I need to put something on. I'm, I haven't seen this in ages. I'm like, see, it's, let's go. Um, somebody just says, what's your name? What's my name? It's in all my videos. My name's Ollie. I'm Ollie Thorne. Hi. Nice to, is this the first video I've finally watched? Hello. Welcome. I mean, I could probably should watch some of the other ones, but like, welcome along. If this is the first thing you've ever seen, that's great. Um, when I did my um, when I did my uh, five year uh, celebration video, looking back on the first video you ever did, uh, some people said and kind of came out of the woodwork and said, "I've been subscribed since you had like ten thousand subscribers. I was in like the first hundred and so on." So if there's anyone here who's actually been watching me since like back in the day, since like two or three beards ago. When I had my first video, I had like like really bad vocal hair. And back when I went through the like, I went through a phase where I was uh, really quite overweight, uh, and then I had like a really bad like spots phase. My face blew up. In fact, there's one video I made where I had such bad acne. It's now unlisted. You can't watch it. Um, and also the video itself wasn't very good. But um, and then I went through like a really skinny phase. I lost like a third of my body weight when I when I got my acceptance letter to drama school. I was like, and I I was wrong about this, and and had like some like bad fat phobia uh in in my brain place and i was like right you know I, I can't be an actor if i'm fat like i need to be skinny um which isn't true uh but i thought it at the time and i lost like a third of my body weight very quickly and very unhealthily in like four months um, and went down absolutely rail thin and was and was and you can watch them um, if you go back and watch my what was liberalism series i'm really thin in that or my uh my video on john locke uh, and the new world that was before I had the beard. Um, I'm like so skinny in that like, my cheekbones are like it's really unhealthy. Um, and then when I got out of drama school in September, I um, I just had a lot of time during the day because that's kind of the nature of the beast when you're an actor. So I just started hitting the gym. And obviously, you know, since VidCon's coming up, wanted to wanted to look good. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and that's why that's why I, I look like this now. So yeah, somebody says, uh, "Are you a gamer? Do you game?" I'm not like, uh, well, I like, I like playing video games. I like them a lot, but I'm always like a good two or three years behind. So two years ago, I just started playing the Arkham series. I played Arkham Asylum because uh, my, my brother has an old PS3 still in the North. So when I go home, I get a few hours in on that one. You know, I revisit some classics. I like like Wind Waker or Red Dead Redemption. And um, when I move flats, hopefully, hopefully when I move flats, could be like any point in the next three months i want to get uh i want to get a switch and finally finally get my hands on breath of the wild because i've been wanting to play it for so so long oh somebody says um what happened to shakespeare vlogs oh, okay so this is like this is really back in the day um so shakespeare vlogs was uh, a second channel that i ran for uh i don't know maybe like two or three months and it was, I did it in the, the summer before I went to drama school. I created this second channel and I vlogged in character as characters from Shakespeare. Um, and I would start off vlogging in English, like maybe as Hamlet. It would come up with like Hamlet, act one, scene, whatever. Um, and I would vlog in character as Hamlet, I'd be like, oh, and I'm really sad, you know, my dad's died, and so on and so on. And then it would just like switch into the verse, it would switch into the speech. Um, and it, I, I, I wanted it to be like A, a way of practicing for me as, a, as an actor about to go to drama school. And uh, also like a way of introducing people to Shakespeare who maybe would have been a bit put off just by the text, just by the verse straight away. Um, and, you know, I, as an experiment, I thought it went well. Um, I, I stopped doing it and they're, they're all they're all private now. Um, the videos do still exist somewhere in YouTube's Galactus brain. Um, and I can still watch them, although I haven't. But uh, I, I took the channel down before I went uh, to, to drama school. For a few reasons. I mean, f first of all, the videos were like, they took a lot of work to make. It, it was impossible for me to be, have one every week. It was really, really tough um, because I had to like have a location and a lot of them were outside and not only that, but I had to like memorize the text and act it well. Um, you know, a whole Shakespeare speech in, in to do it like really, really well like for performance public standard, not just an audition, but like performing for the public to do in a week is like a lot. Um, so I was I was kind of struggling to do that and philosophy tube and I was like okay this is a cool experiment but philosophy tubes like where my where my base is, um, and also because I I felt that um, 
I felt that I kind of taken it as far as I could go. I felt, okay, if I keep doing screen acting and I keep doing Shakespeare on my own, I might get into some bad habits and then that might be difficult to like untrain because a large part of acting training isn't learning, it's unlearning. So I thought, okay, I've taken this as far as I can go. Uh, and uh, and I, um, yeah, I, I stopped doing it. Um, but it's like, yeah, I, I was like pleased with it. It was a fun, it was a fun experiment anyway. Yeah. Hmm. Austin B says, I started watching you when someone was on Tumblr recommended your What Was Liberalism series. Yeah. Um, I, at the time, I remember at the time, I made it about six months ago. And I remember at the time being a little, um, being like, oh, I don't know if that's my best work. But now I go back and I, I rewatched it recently and I was like, huh, actually, you know, I think this is some of the best stuff I've done. Um, and I watch it now and think I could have improved it. I wish I'd mentioned this or that, or that I've like learned things since then that I would have put in. Like, um, I wish I could have put more stuff in there had I known it just about, uh, especially in part three, neoliberalism, about uh, Latin America and the experiments that, that were conducted there. Um, but yeah, somebody, or, oh, August Denny's or August Denies, I've only ever seen it written down, so I don't know how it's pronounced, but they said, would you ever do a video on how you script an episode? I mean, I could, but I think it would be really dull. I mean, I can just tell you right now, I, I just like sit down and write it. Um, some, sometimes if I have the idea and I'm like, yeah, this is going to be great, but I'll just write it. Um, sometimes if I'm like, I know there's a, there's a script here somewhere, but I'm like trying to find it. I'll just like write notes on specific text. I'll be like, okay, Kant says this, like Kierkegaard says this. And like, these are the bits I want to keep and these are the bits I don't need. And then it'll kind of sit on it and gestate. And I like to try and think of them now in three parts. You know, I started dividing them up into three um, or, or four or five or six or whatever. But, you know, I try and divide them into parts. And I try and sometimes I'll only have two. I'm like, okay, I want to see this first and then this. But like, what's the third thing? And then I'll see something in the news or I'll see something on Twitter that's like, oh, you know, so it's so this. Or like, oh, it's a new episode or whatever. And I'm like, that's the third bit. That's the way it. Um, so, I mean, I don't really have like a set, um, a set process for doing it, really. Uh, it's just like, whatever whatever gets a job done really the scripting in the show like tends to fly by the seat of my pants i think a lot more than and i know you guys are probably like used to it being like every friday two o'clock but like it really does sort of <laughs> fly by the seat of my pants like so uh i've got i'm trying to find time after rehearsal tomorrow to film um friday's episode it's just like it's just going to be a comments one just going through the comments from that thing that um that me and peter did peter coffin we did that collaboration together um and then uh they go through the comments in the plato episode as well so yeah it's gonna be uh it's gonna be a fun one um i hope but i just gotta find time after rehearsal to film it because um on um so i think on wednesday i fly to america to vidcon and we'll talk more about vidcon later on i'm sure with the uh with the special guests um Somebody says, wait, did you study acting or philosophy? Both. Uh, so first of all, I did a four-year master's in philosophy in Scotland, and then I took a year out, and then I went to drama school uh, and, and became an actor, and I graduated in September. Um, someone says, what is your, uh, what's your gym routine? I mean, like, it, it changes all the time, uh, depending on what I, what I want to do. Like, if you, if you genuinely want to know, I have it in my phone, I can tell you. Um, it is... So um, at the moment, I'm I'm not. I had a bit of a knee injury, so I'm kind of resting my legs, and uh, and uh, I'm kind of happy with where my chest is at. So I'm I'm sort of going a bit less on that. I'm just trying to focus on like arms at the moment, really. Um, so just like stuff like chin ups, uh, tricep extensions, um, sit ups, bicep curls, uh, a little bit of bench press, and then I'm trying to work in some more cardio as well because I'm like I've sort of bulked up a bit, and I might try and like lose a bit of fat. Um, and yeah, it's just that kind of stuff, stuff really. I'm just like mainly doing them, um, doing arms and a little bit of light chest and cardio and abs at the moment. So yeah, we'll we'll see whether or not it, people really give a damn at VidCon. But it's actually been really interesting because it's changed the kind of roles I'm going up for, and the kind of roles that I'm getting seen for, and the kind of roles that I'm getting cast in. So whereas before, when I was really skinny, I was kind of going in for and getting suggested for stuff like the nerdy like the best friend or whatever. Now I'm, I'm going up for and, and auditioning for and playing like leading man roles. So it's, it's really interesting how the industry goes through phases. Like a couple of years ago, it was like, you had to be super skinny. Like I, I remember, uh, must've been about 15. I saw Ben Wishaw in a play with Rupert Grint called Mojo in London. And we were up in the gods and I could count Ben Wishaw's ribs 
him up. So he took a shirt off at one point. I could count his ribs. He's like a greyhound. He was so skinny. Um, but interestingly, at my showcase, so at the end of drama school, you do a big showcase um, and you invite, or well, the school invites agents to come and see you and hopefully sign you. And no one does. No, some of them do. But the only guys, the only guys who got agents out of my showcase were guys who were like proper, proper hench. I've got this buddy Lance, Lance Jeffrey. He's like, like huge. He's like Captain America, like more buff than Captain America. He got an agent, and uh, my other mate Doug as well. He's uh, he was on my course. He got an agent. He's he's literally been a men's health model. Um, so yeah. So that like, right now, I think just like muscles are, are in. Maybe it's like a superhero thing, but it's it can't just be a superhero thing because it's they they are like casting muscly guys in stuff that isn't even superhero movies so yeah who knows who knows um yeah there you go a collab with Asuka mortician would be amazing yeah i really like Asuka mortician um i think i wanted to do a few, it was a few years ago i think maybe even quite a few years ago i emailed her i wanted to do uh, a video on on death and like what is uh, and what is like dying what's what's bad about dying philosophically um yeah so we'll we'll see um we'll see whether that goes anywhere and maybe if she's at vidcon i might run into her and and uh and have a have a an ask um what can someone do to oh it's all gone what can someone do to look for the physical part of acting testing uh, I mean, you can like you can take uh, classes like dance classes or uh, agility classes. Um, to be honest, I wouldn't advise going to the gym all that much uh, because you can get like not very agile. But hello, hi, hi. Can other people see you now, or do can I have to make? Oh, I think other people can. Yeah, hold on. Let me look at the chat. Ha <laughs> ha! Yay! How are you? How are you doing? Good. Um, how are you? I'm doing really Watch well. You look great. Uh, Thank you. So do you. Uh, congrats on getting cast in those leading man roles. Well, cheers. Thanks a lot. Yeah, it's good fun. Um, <laughs> oh, weird. chat's going mad. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. Nat's our special guest for tonight, for as for as long as she'd like to be. Um, yeah, yeah. It's good to see you. Yeah, you too. I'm well. I'll see you for real next week. That'll be yeah, exciting. Yeah, like Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, yeah, IRL in California. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really looking forward to VidCon. So for anyone who didn't know, um, I'm going to be at VidCon as of next week. So if you, if you see me wandering around California, yes, that is me. Um, I think I was in Belfast a while ago and I got a tweet from someone who was like, I just saw someone that looks just like you. And I was like, that's because it's me. Um, so if you do see someone who looks exactly like me in California, come up and say hi. Um, yeah. Are you going to be involved with the actual um, with the actual stuff itself? Are you doing like panels? I don't or? think so. So for a while, a bunch of different people who have influence at VidCon had said to me at one point in time, or other, oh, you definitely should be on a panel. Like, we, I can totally get you on this thing. Like, I'll get you all this. Mm -hmm. None of them actually did it. I think that, I think I'm a little bit out there for the, um, some of the VidCon stuff. I don't know. I don't know if they want me associated with a conference. Really? <laughs> I got, well, yeah, I think that, I mean, I'm not exactly like super friendly to corporate advertising. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> now I don't know how much of a problem that is, but mm. I mean, I do think that they. <laughs> I just I don't know. I think maybe they're worried that if they invite me, then like they would they would they just don't want the trouble caused by Sargon or people like that being like, well, you invited this radical leftist. Why did you yeah, not invite yeah, yeah. for balance? Well, I mean, like they've got to give people like platforms and engage with other ideas, right? I mean, that's what he's all about. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't. I haven't really heard from um from Hank in any in any meaningful capacity since I like called him a bourgeois technocratic liberal a few years ago. Oh no. In good, in, I, lovingly. <laughs> Uh, I said that the I said the Internet Creators Guild was bourgeois technocratic liberalism, and I kind of went off on. Well, that. Yeah. but yeah, um, I yeah, yeah I don't get. Um, I, I mean, he apparently loves my videos. Great, but... like yeah, I don't. I doubt he watches mine anymore. He did watch that one, but yeah. he didn't invite me to the conference. Uh, he didn't invite me either. I'm just turning up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm just. I don't even think I'm going to be at the conference. I'm going to be like in Anaheim, like poolside, like <laughs> <laughs> hosting your own. Conference yeah, conference. exactly. ContraCon. Mm. Nice. I imagine the cosplay will be great. I'm sure it will be. 
<laughs> Somebody says talk louder. I'll 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 split the difference and just move you slightly closer to my to my face. That's there a good idea. I did notice that you were quiet on this a little bit quiet on the stream, so I might be louder than you. No worries. Well I can also turn myself up using the um, fantastic editing powers I have. So there we go. Hope that's better. And let me know if um let me know if it's not everybody. But yeah, I'm excited about about What are you flying over? Uh Wednesday the twentieth? Right. Yeah, I think yeah, I land on. like pretty late Wednesday. What about you? Um I'm coming on like Wednesday afternoon and then I think someone's picking me up from the airport. I'm staying at a friend's place Wednesday night. Nice. Then I have a hotel for the next three days. Cool, so cool. Should be fun. Yeah, I'm a little nervous, to be honest. Like, yeah, it's it's not really a thing to be nervous. Well, I don't know. You've met people from the internet before a lot. I take it. Yeah, 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 yeah. A fair yeah. few, mainly kind of British. Yeah, it is like it is like weird to see so many of these people in person. Like, at, at this point, it doesn't weird me out. But last last year was the first time I went to a VidCon, and like. Oh, it was weird. I didn't handle it that well. I took some pictures I shouldn't have taken. Yeah, I'm nervous about uh, that. I, I, I mean, I said on, on Twitter yeah. to you, uh, I'm nervous that like somebody comes up to me and they're like, can I get a selfie with you? And then yeah. I do it and then they tweet it and everyone's like, that's like racist Jeff from the alt-right podcast and you've just endorsed him. And I'm like, oh no. Right, right, right. Like, exactly. No, no. Um, yeah, also, my 11-year-old um, cousin, Lily, if, if you're watching Big Love, uh, has given me a list of all her favorite YouTubers to try and get their autographs. She sent me this list because uh, I said I was going because uh, her dad said, oh, you know, Ollie's a YouTuber. And she was like, wow, really? Uh, and I, I said, yeah, yeah, if you want anyone's autograph, just like, let me know and I'll get it for you. And she sent me this list. I've got no idea. <laughs> They're all, they've all got like 14 million followers and I'm like, okay, yeah. how do I find these people? <laughs> Well, that's what's what's funny about VidCon is that the conference itself, like the YouTubers who are really big, like people like you and me, don't do not really make a, a dent in like what the conference is for, which yeah. is these, like nineteen year old boys with you know a hundred thousand Instagram followers, and they show up on the on the conference floor, and there's just this like beetle mania shrieking of like fourteen year old girls. Yeah, I can't it, wait to see it. I think that sounds it's quite great. spectacle. That's worth seeing. It's worth seeing because like it reminds you what this website actually is. Like this website is not really for people who discuss politics. Like this is it's like teen entertainment is what YouTube mostly is. Yeah, like, teen teen choice awards, yeah, I guess. Which it's yeah, it's like the teen choice awards. That's like the very yeah. much the feeling of it. But so I feel like super old there. But it's also funny because like it's scary because you realize that actually a lot of the like political audience that we people like us acquire is they come over from that group so yeah i was about to say like, like if you're, yeah. if you're any no no hate on teens at all if you're like a teenager and you're in the chat like good for you also yeah. welcome along you're very very welcome no, and says, I'm, I'm hey i'm a teenager and i'm watching fuck off yeah fair call man yeah yeah no like, i'm happy to have that audience but the thing yeah, is like definitely what, what, what a lot of i think older people don't understand is like youtube is go is how people that age get that's their media. That's how they get information about the world. Definitely. And like, it's actually getting less scary than it was a year ago. But a year ago, it was very scary to think about that. Yeah, because like, I remember. Who, who were the entry points? Like John Tron, like racist makeup vloggers. Like that's yeah. who it was. Who was like yeah. getting people in politics that's and like tumbles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Things have gotten a little more civilized, I have to say. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. I mean, I, I like, I, I really try not to engage with much of the nasty stuff. Um, yeah, I just like keep it at arm's length but i try um, to do less you, of it yeah but you do it really well like you and yeah. sean and H bomb might really engage with it well and do a good job with it and i'm like Ugh. well i used to do that i mean i i did things a year ago or, or a year and a half ago i would never do now because i have like a greater sense of just being vulnerable to yeah, that, those people yeah. but um what i do now is kind of like well there's ways of just still doing it like i do the fictional character thing was a good innovation because yeah. it lets me talk about a th group of people without actually talk, saying, saying their names hmm. that sort of keeps me it just keeps the, the title description tags clean of all references to people who we don't want to be interacting with definitely let let them realize wait that's i'm like that sometimes yeah or let them not realize it at all don't, don't yeah, yeah. Show up. You, yeah. you, do you well, I, I don't know i'm like pretty biased because i'm a fan obviously but i think you like do do your fictional characters who i 
like who I take it you don't agree with in real life, I think you do them like very three dimensionally. Um, or uh, I, I feel that way. Maybe somebody who agreed with them more like wouldn't. I try to do that, yeah, because I think. Well, to me, that's also been interesting. That's like one of the advantages of doing that fictional character format is that it allows you to sort of show in more psychological depth, like what is going on behind. It's not just about arguments, right? It's about people, hmm. which, see, I'm not really truly philosophical at heart. Like, I, I, I'm more like literary, I guess. No, because, no, like, I'm an actor. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So like, I think that what's interesting to me is not just arguments, but like, what kind of personality Glee comes up with arguments like that? He's like attracted or will claim to have certain positions when they like might not. Right, so. right, exactly. Yeah. Um, you have to usually give me acting lessons because I could stand to work on it, but um, <laughs> oh. that's, apparently that's what I do now. What acting? Yeah, I never was like I never was like, oh, I want to be an actress, but like, kind of <laughs> just, like here we are, like I'm playing characters on the internet. I guess, yeah, fair enough, yeah. <laughs> well, just like I was doing with with Shakespeare vlogs a year mm -hmm. ago. Yeah, yeah. Like vlogging character. I did this one, which was like, uh, I just made Hamlet like really angsty, and I found a, an old portrait in our house and had that as like the ghost, and the like mm. the portrait was talking, and like it was really bad. I'm sorry, these videos aren't up anymore. Yeah, well, maybe yeah, if if we've got any time in the US, I'll maybe find them. I'm gonna regret promising that, but I'll dig them up. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'm gonna bring this up. Well I'm gonna bring this up when late when you're not thinking clearly. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be a good crack. It's, like, it's better than taking pictures with racist YouTuber X. Yeah, yeah. Whose who's avatar is like an aardvark in a suit. Or something. Yes, on a suit. Yeah, always. Oh my god. I just found this new... I can't even say the name because I don't want to draw attention to it. But I found like a new like right-wing YouTuber who dresses up as a wizard and... <laughs> like, this is what's become of like angry... Man, white man at YouTube is it's now like wizards screaming about social justice. We demand to be taken seriously. Yeah. We demand to be taken seriously. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I don't want to mock because I, I promised, um, I promised when I started I would never say anything bad about anybody. So that's very noble. Big love to the wizard guy. Uh, yeah. I hope you I hope you all your dreams come true, except for the. I mean, I generally answer. try not to mock either. Um, I yeah. accept. Well. It's a delicate balance because I'll do some light mocking, but mm -hmm. I think that there's kind of a distinction between like, like, um, just kind of like playful dragging of a person and mm -hmm. like actually going for their like heart, <laughs> like yeah. because there's just there's, there's two different things. Like, and oftentimes one tries to pass it off as the other. Like, mm -hmm. actually, that's kind of what I was doing. With that that this like Tiffany Tumbles character on my channel is that she's she's very mean. And she tries to pass it off as like bitchy sass, but like, no, like it's actually it's like real cruelty. Yeah, and anyone who's had like older siblings knows that it's just yeah, yeah. And there's like there's a, a lot of times when that line between sass and cruelty is crossed on the internet, mm. and I try not to I try to think about that line and not to cross it, and I think that even though I do you know calling George Peterson daddy and, and all this kind of stuff, like, <laughs> it's 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 kind of mockery. And it, like, cause it is mockery, right? But it's not like mockery that's like, designed to be like deeply like wounding in any way, yeah. you know. And I think that one of the, and my my like sen my sense of handling very fragilely certain egos, I think, is one reason why I've managed to not attract quite as much negative attention as some other people. Like I even like some positive attention. Like yes, like even like like a guy like the golden one, like he kind of likes my videos. <laughs> Yeah, and like him, it's because like even though I make fun of him, like I don't do it in a way that's like deeply like like I basically am still propping up his fundamental self-image. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point, actually. That's clever. like I don't challenge in some sense like fundamentally the way he thinks of himself. And I just incorporate it into my universe and then make yeah. jokes about that. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. That's yeah. what I want that's what I would do with the wizard too. I would never doubt that he's a, actually a very powerful wizard. Yeah, I'm sure he is. Like, if you need anyone to play a wizard as a cameo on your channel, I've already got the goatee. That's true. That's true. You could you would look good in a robe. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, that's back. Flashback to my uni days. Maybe in the oh god, yeah. Down with it is kind of weird, isn't it, that everyone dresses up as a wizard for graduation? Oh well, I mean, I I went to one of the unis in the UK where you don't just wear gowns at graduation. Oh, you wear it all the time. All the time. 
Not so it's like actually like Hogwarts, Hogwarts situation. Yeah, yeah, it was like definitely a lot like Hogwarts. Ours were red. They were red and oh like gosh. maroon. And there were all kinds of rules about like how you have to wear them. Um, That's so Gryffindor. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so um, for people in the chat who don't know, I went to St. Andrews University in Scotland, which is um, which is where Will and Kate went, um, as, as in future future king uh, and queen. And um, there, there are all kinds of rules about how you wear your gown. Like first years have to wear it here and second years here and third years, depending on what stuff you do and like wear it down here if you're fourth year. Um, but if you do it wrong, you acquire an academic curse. And the only way to get rid of an academic curse is to run into the sea nude at sunrise on the 1st of May. Um, so, yeah, that had to be done a lot because everyone oh, just stays up all night and gets wasted and then runs into the, like, the North Sea and it's totally freezing. <laughs> and for some reason, every year there's a German news crew turns up and it's just like, look at these idiots. <laughs> yeah, this is like, this would never happen in America. You would never have, you would never have rogues in school and you certainly wouldn't have punishment involving running nude into the sea. But there must be some. Like, there must be some like weird academic traditions. I mean, oh, what, oh, what kind of well, okay. Here's what you do have. You have frats, and th mm. there's a lot of nude sea running in frats. Yes. Yeah. I feel yeah. it gets worse than that. <laughs> yeah, I bet there was there's a big American frat tried to open a chapter in in the uni I was in, and uh, yeah. and like the students protested, and I refused. I'm like, no, yeah. I don't want you. And yeah, when I was an undergraduate, I went to a school actually where like it was like no frats allowed. And oh, nice. I think that was probably for the best. Hmm. Um, I know, like some people. Sorry, some people go to frats and like get very defensive about them because not all of them are terrible. Um, I bet some of them are, are like helpful socially. I yes, suppose. there was like, and there's like, yeah, like frats that do focus on that kind of like public service angle, but there's a certain amount of. Hmm. Yeah, I bet some of them are like. I, I bet they get judged by the worst ones as well. Yeah. But, well, the worst ones get the publicity. Yeah, definitely. Same as YouTube. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Yeah, do you even, like... I know so many YouTubers are embarrassed to call themselves a YouTuber. Because really? it just sounds like... We said we're not going to throw shade, so... It has this implication of the kind of person who might say, film a corpse. Um, oh, and... right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I honestly hadn't... That honestly hadn't occurred to me. I mean, yeah. I, I found through like trial and error that it's just the simplest way because uh -huh. if i say like i make videos online people are like wait like for like a company and i'm like no whereas if i just say i'm an actor and a youtuber people like get it um, yeah well, that's 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 what i found too because i've tried being like oh i'm like a independent video producer video media oh, new media it on their face that that's where i can see the gears turning and they're faking porn <laughs> like oh right <laughs> I've got to say, no one's ever looked at me like that. <laughs> yeah, but like, uh, yeah, so I, I say YouTuber because at least that's PG-13 for sure. But like, that's yeah, I uh, I know like my friend Lindsay Alice, she called herself like what is like a content creator or like online video creator or something like just to avoid that stigma. I mean, um, if, I, if the stuff I made was half as good as what Lindsay makes, I'd feel comfortable going for stuff whatever the hell I wanted at that stage. Uh -huh. Yeah. Just call myself yeah. a professional badass. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, her stuff is obviously very, uh, incredibly well made. Um, but yeah, but, and then she also does a lot of stuff outside of YouTube. That's where the stigma, I think, comes to be a thing. Like when you're, when you're, you know, asking PBS to, you know, work with them for another project, like you want to introduce yourself. You want, to, you want the first word on your resume to be something that doesn't call to mind a person. Oh, I don't know. Eating five hundred hamburgers on camera for attention. Yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah. I mean, I, I, that often doesn't really occur to me because when I do jobs outside of YouTube, they're not, they're not in a kind of real business world. Yeah. It's, and and it's acting when no one really sort of cares. Right. No one. No one's going to judge you. No. I, I feel that I know. If they do, they don't. Uh, don't say it. Maybe they have. I was. Oh man. A while ago, I was sitting outside an audition. Um, and it was a Shakespeare audition as well. So I was like, because I love Shakespeare, I really wanted to do it. Um, and I heard my channel trailer playing from inside. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and then a woman came out and she was like, yeah, we just found a YouTube channel. I was like, oh, yeah, nice. Cool. And we just sort of chatted about that for a bit. Um, I didn't get the part, but I'd never found out whether like it was because of that or what. Um, I'm... But then equally, sometimes like the opposite happens, which I can't say on the stream. But like the, like, the thing I told you about that person who who found us through the last stream we did. Um, 
yeah mm -hmm. so maybe sometimes it helps and maybe sometimes oh i think it i mean i think being on youtube helps like you have a reach on this platform that you cannot get any other way like yeah. more people are going to watch your youtube channel than will ever go to live theater like you just yeah. can't like i mean i think like, think about this like some of your videos have like if your video gets like a hundred thousand views that's like selling out madison square garden for five consecutive nights like oh, yeah i guess how like how are you gonna get that many people any other way than on youtube um yeah yeah i hadn't thought of it like that i hadn't thought of it as like multiples of big theaters um, yeah if you think it's a, it's a it's a terrible way to think about it you'll go crazy yeah. Don't think about it. <laughs> but then there's something amazing about seeing somebody well i i don't know for me there's something amazing about seeing somebody who's like a big established screen star in a small intimate space like a stage like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah yesterday i saw um if you're in London at the moment, there's a fantastic play on at the Wyndham Theatre called Red. It's about Mark Rothko. Uh, and it stars Alfred Molina, um, who you, if you don't know Alfred Molina, uh, he's Dr. Octopus in Spider-Man 2. This is like most, probably the most visible thing. But a phenomenal actor. And the play is so, so good. And it's just it's just really amazing to just like see him on the stage. Be like, wow, that, that, that's like a real like master of the craft, like in person, in the flesh. Um, taller than I thought as well. Yeah, there's something, there's something about seeing a person in person that's very different. Well, as we'll discover on Wednesday. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> my experience with YouTubers is often that they are quite like themselves in person. Mm. Um, I don't. I feel like I might be an exception to that because in my videos, my videos are very scripted and deliberate. Mm. And I feel that I'm sort of playing a character on my channel. Mm -hmm. uh, like right now, I'm not obviously, but like. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not. I feel like I don't resemble too much this like this extremely confident degenerate that I play on YouTube. Um, in person, I'm like much shyer, I guess, and not. Fair enough, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I've never really. I've never had anyone comment on how different I am from the screen to in person. Other like not not in terms of my yeah. personality anyway. The one thing I mean, that I from, every time. So live stream is like half and half, and I, yeah. I get the sense that you're you're very similar on live streams as you are in your videos. Like. You have the same way of speaking, I think. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I, I feel there's like a gulf between the live stream and the video, mm. but no one's ever like no one's ever really assessed it in in person. Other like the one thing I always get every time anyone meets me is that I'm taller than they thought. Um, yeah. Oh, I got that too. I get that too. <laughs> um. Oh, by the way, I guess um, do you have a ticket to VidCon or are you, yeah, you're just doing like ContraCon on your own? Does I that mean don't... you won't be at the prom. That's a good question. I don't know. We should look into the prom. I should, I should look and see if I need to get a ticket. I got a new suit and everything. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'll, I'll... I'm not, I'm not going to show it on the stream. But, you know. We'll well, of course not. Uh, someone uh, in the chat says, how tall am I? I'm 6'1". So we're the same height. Hmm. <laughs> Who's eating octopus today? <laughs> that's that's Did... my turn. <laughs> If, for those of you who didn't see the last live stream we did, uh, we had a we we cooked dinner, and uh, and I cooked octopus <laughs> just to show off, basically for no other reason. Um, yeah, it was super tasty. Yes, we are reading the chat. I'm not. <laughs> you no, are. I wouldn't. I am. I, yeah, you might not want to. <laughs> the chat's not good for my mental health. No, I bet not. Um. Yeah, I'm always afraid when I meet people in real life. I'm like, oh god, they're gonna think I'm so boring because there's no way I can actually entertain someone the way I do on YouTube. Um, oh, I'm sure that's not true. And, and I get, I get, I get recognized pretty often now, like when I leave the house. So I always feel like I have to like always look good when I leave the house. They're like, oh god, I'm gonna meet people. They're gonna want selfies. And then like the minute I'm like talking to someone who's who's recognizing me, I'm like, oh god, like how do you perfect to be on? I have to be so nice to them or they're gonna they're gonna report me to Reddit or whatever. I know, I feel that as well. It's it's weird. Um I I it seems to occur in bunches to me. I seem to get recognized mm -hmm. like two or three times in a cluster and then Yeah you know, weeks on by and nothing happens. But um I was actually I actually I got recognized in, uh, when I was with my mum and dad a while ago. Somebody came up to me and was just like, Oh hey and I was like Hi, this is my parents. Slack, like, and they're like, "Oh, all of it. Well done." <laughs> uh, yeah, it's odd. It's weird. And I went to the um, I went to the theater a while ago as well, and got recognized there as well. It's just, it's very odd. Yeah, it happened to be. It doesn't usually happen to be in Baltimore for some reason. Uh, maybe because 
it's possible that people know that I'm from Baltimore and Baltimore and they don't want to bother me. But hmm. when I went I went to New York last weekend and like I got on the subway and like within five minutes, like someone was like, Natalie. Oh, um, yeah. really nice. No, and everyone I've met has actually been really sweet. Um, oh yeah, definitely so. Oh my gosh, I was in <laughs> I was in Philadelphia with Lindsay. We were at a bar and this guy recognizes us and like starts talking to us for five minutes super excited and then his date comes along and is like okay time to go oh <laughs> shout out to that guy what oh, a legend yeah, yeah. and to his date. and what and to his date and to his date yeah definitely <laughs> we weren't trying to steal him i'm so sorry <laughs> yeah yeah i'm i'm like i'm nervous about uh, not just VidCon, but like America, generally. I'm just I, I've so I've been before, yeah. um, and it's for me. It's always like a, it's like when I go upstairs in the dark and I think there's one more step than there is, and then mm. then you step and like you fall because I'll be walking along because America's like very familiar to me, but then like suddenly it's not and it's very foreign, and I find that quite sort of disorienting. Um, like I, I was in Texas a couple of years ago, and um. Like just, just like for instance, I'll be walking along and be like, "Oh my god, that man has a gun!" Like, call the police, and it's like, "No, it, it, he is the police." Like, everyone has that here. Like, it's fine. It's fine. Like, yeah. Well, that's it's funny because that's exactly how I feel about England. Like, it's it's like everything is exactly the same, except slightly, slightly different. Like until like suddenly it's not. <laughs> yeah. Like every word is just like everything's worded slightly differently. Like, you how notice, do you mean? Like. On the, on the tube or whatever, like, instead, like, I'm trying to think of a good example, like, oh, so instead of, like, exit, this I will say way out. Really? Like, this is not very exciting as a difference, but it's a difference, and, like, is it, like, I wonder why that is. I don't know, and, like, it's just everything is slightly different. I noticed something really odd as well last time I was in America about, like, the way physical space is organized is very different because mm. I, I i was walking past some some houses and the houses were, were absolutely bloody massive i was in houston and then i realized that like oh they've got a plot of land and then they've built the house to be as big as that whereas we would have the land and then like have a tiny house and right. a big garden and i was just like wow that's so odd and the flags as well everyone's like the, the American flag is like everywhere and I'm like so it really there's a ton of regional variant variants within the US too like that so what you're describing is what's called a McMansion is where they build like these giant oh. houses to like, exactly the size of the plot of land and so you have this absurd thing thing where you have a block where it's just like giant house with like a tiny little space between the next giant house um <laughs> you know, like it's very Texas because um, yeah. you know Texas Midwest there's just there's so much space there's just like infinite space so you can just mm. waste space um, yeah. And so, you know, the giant, giant parking lots and things are very common. Every, everything is, re revolves around cars. New York City is the opposite. It's, just, you know, Manhattan is an island and, and it's already like completely built up. So there's like no space to do anything. You have to like, you feel like you have to like lose weight just to be in the city, like to fit places. Like yeah, it's <laughs> the, like the bars are tiny and like the cafes are tiny and you just have to take up as little space as possible and you can't park anywhere or you're, or you're doomed. So you've you've been to London before? Um, yes, a couple of times. You've been anywhere else in the UK? Um, I've been so a year ago. I was with my brother. No, two years ago. Well, um, and my my brother's girlfriend lives in Cambridge, and oh, nice. so we stayed there for a week. Then we kind of drove up to like Northern Wales and stayed in a hostel there and like hiked around in the mountains and then drove down drove down to like Southern Wales and stayed in like a hostel that used to be a castle. And then I guess went back to Cambridge and I went down to London. So that I've done a little bit of like UK milling around, but not a whole lot. Nice, nice. You should go up to the north. Yeah, I should. I, it's the best next bit. time I go to the <laughs> UK. Oh, are you, gonna, um, are you gonna come to uh, Summer in the City in August? Oh yeah, good question. Um. When is that? It is August the uh, until the uh, it's okay. like two or three days. Um, awesome. I'll send you the dates when I got them. Awesome. But yeah, if you want to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'd be good fun.
summer of the city is weird as well it's like i i get the imp- i've never been to vidcon but i get the impression it's like vidcon but a lot smaller there's a mm-hmm. lot of sort of the teenage girls and the screaming and the and that sort of thing but on like a very small english scale so i'm looking forward to see what happens when like they're like american teens just like let loose i've seen some of the footage from like vidcon two or three years ago yeah a famous video of them running up the down escalator mm-hmm. trying mm-hmm. to get a bow of, of yeah some... it's it's like i said beetle mania is really the yeah. best reference i'm gonna feel like really old <laughs> Oh yeah, you're gonna feel old as hell. I'm I, so but every time, every YouTube event, everyone's like, "Oh my god, that's like Ernst Mahom." I'm like, "Who's that?" It's like, "Oh, he makes videos where he like takes this like specific part of a go kart out of a box." I'm like, "Wow, it's got 40 yeah. million followers." I'm like, wow. no, "It's a lot of that. It's a lot of like that's my experience too. Is that it's a lot of like massive crowds revolving around people I've never heard of." Yeah. And you're like, "Who are they?" I'm like, "Oh, they they talk about, you know." Right, they un- they unbox things. They, they uh, like review that one really specific action figure that was made in this. Right, scene. which is right. great. Like it's awesome that people like people with such niche interests can can find. Yeah, it's very interesting. And uh, um, I I love the I actually have come to love talking to industry people, especially some in the city, like agents and scouts and so on, because. I I have I've had great chats at some of the city in the green room where people are like, so what do you do? And I'm like, oh, you know, I've got this channel. It's got like hundred or like two hundred thousand subscribers. And I like they do like the cartoon dollar signs appear in their eyes. And they're like, oh, like what is it? What is it? And I'm like, I do education. Yeah, I give away like free like free education online. They're like, yeah, just, let's just go get another drink. Yeah. <laughs> just, and I'm like, yes. Yeah, I have I have incredible difficult. This is a struggle for me at VidCon. I have incredible difficulty summarizing what my channel is. Like, yeah, I can see how that would be. I'll be like, well, it's kind of like, it's like leftist politics, but like very theatrical and also a joke. Yeah, and like it would be tough to do it without using the language of the people that would critique it. Because I think right. if, you said, if you said like I'm an unironic social justice warrior, people would get it. But I, I, I wouldn't yeah. certainly. I, don't, I wouldn't want to like legitimize that kind of like language or like use their terms. Well, I've tried that before. Like being like, okay, so I'm like oh, yeah. a social justice warrior, but like funny or whatever. And like, yeah, you're right. People like look at people are like get weirded out by it. It's not a good way. To, it's not a good way to describe it. Yeah, I guess yeah. it's 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 still a little inside baseball, isn't it? Um, it is, yeah. You could, I mean, there's people in the chat are suggesting that you could say that you'd make educational stuff. Yeah, I think um, saying it that it's educational is probably the better way to go. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when I'm talking to people who aren't like, they don't, because like whenever like a cab driver or like, a, you know, someone like that asks what I do, what my YouTube channel is, they're I not going to check. <laughs> yeah, I always wish that, like, I, why don't I do it? I wish I had like a makeup channel, you know? Like, yeah. It'll be so fun to talk about this in the back of a cab, but now I'm sitting here being like, "Do I want to mention Pepe?" Like, yeah, it's like, and so I don't need to understand out. about right wing memes. And right, I right. To yeah, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I was yeah. um. Whenever somebody says, like, "Oh, I've watched one of your videos," I'm always like, "Shit, like which one?" I know me too. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's the first thing. I, like I got recognized the other day, like at the corner store, like right next to where I live. And someone was like, oh, so how's YouTube going? And I was just like, oh, God, oh, God, how do you know? Like, this is bad. Like, But also, like, are they a fan or, like, not? <laughs> right, 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 right. You, want, you have to wonder that, too. Yeah. And it's, this is really absurd, but, like, when someone, I meet someone in real life who's seen my videos, I always get this, the, my first reaction is this, like, sting of embarrassment as, like, oh, yeah, God, same. like, they've read my diary. Like, yeah. yes. I didn't know people could watch this. <laughs> like, which one have you seen? Because it matters, like... Yeah, right. Because like, but that's preposterous. Because like, what am I doing uploading this? And I don't want a hundred thousand people. Exactly. Yeah, of course. But like, so like psychologically, there's like because it's not filling Madison Square Garden five nights in a row. Like in your mind, in your mind, it's just just, just typing on your computer and then oh, video uploaded, great. Like, and you don't think you see the number of viewers, but you don't really think about those as people. I get more nervous in front of an audience of like fifty people in person than I do the five hundred and fifty people watching this right now. Right, I'll just like casually hit upload and I'm like, because like if we were on stage right now and there was 550 people in the like amphitheater, like I would be nervous as hell. But exactly, yeah. I was um I was in a I, you know this this Jesus play I was in a while ago um where I was mm-hmm. in I was in rehearsal. So for anyone in the chat who doesn't know, I was in, I was in a a play a while ago that was like it was about Jesus and I was I was his understudy when I had longer hair. But anyway, the guy the guy playing Jesus um looks exactly as you imagine white Jesus. He's got like the long hair and the beard and everything. 
and we were just kind of uh, chilling out while the director was directing somebody else somewhere on stage. And he just, uh, he turns to me and he goes, by the way, I really enjoy your philosophy videos. Congratulations on them. I was like, oh my God. Like, it was just, it was just really, really bizarre to have anybody say that, to have anybody say in my other life, in my acting life, and also to have the person who said that look exactly like Jesus, but like a very English Jesus. It's like, by the way, I very much enjoyed them. Well, oh my God, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, like really yeah, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would lose it. Really posh Jesus. I was like, I would lose it if posh Jesus is saying like my video. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Somebody says, was that at the Edinburgh Fringe? No, it wasn't. It, it was in it was in London. It was in uh, it was in Trafalgar Square. Um Yes, Jesus is a fan of, of Philosophy Tube, apparently. Philosophy Tube. Well, this should be a character on your channel, Posh Jesus. Posh Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Comments. Yeah. Well make it a child make it a character on yours and I'll play. Yeah, it could be a character on my channel. You can play on. Go for it. Yeah, you're gonna need to get some colored lights. Yeah, that's a, I like when I ordered this big light, which you can't all see. There's a big light behind me. It came with all coloured stuff in it, and mm -hmm. foolishly, I was you know nineteen, twenty at the time, threw them away and just kept. I was like, I don't need that coloured light. Don't need that fancy stuff. Just like raw bulb, and then threw them all away. And now I don't have any coloured lights, but I'll have to get myself some. If you can yeah. recommend me some good ones, I can. Yeah, I will. Well, I'll send you my recommendations. I, the ones I use are actually like. I can hold on. Where's my phone? I can control these with your with, phone. With my phone, yeah. Whoa. They're very so. Like I have an app <laughs> so that I can like, um, like this one. Neutral, twenty-four percent. I was going to say your your main light at the moment seems to be the sun. So if you yeah, can... that's coming from behind me. It's not wow. great light, but like whoa. Yeah, I can do this just with my phone. It's a lot of fun. And I can put it on um, like the color cycle too, so that uh, it'll just cycle colors. Like the Christmas tree. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Like a, like a cuttlefish. The bulb is fucking raw, says someone in the chat. It is. It is. It's just so when, I, when I'm under my lights and I'm filming, it's just like so hot and just <laughs> blazing down. It's ridiculous. <laughs> You've gone all pink now. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Mesmerizing just watching you like. <laughs> Well, I have that effect on people, you know. <laughs> no, <it's not> <laughs> Good work. I should bring. I'll bring one to VidCon. Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, bring the recommendations. Yeah. It's really smart to bring your colored lights with you, and then you can mesmerize wherever you go. Absolutely, yeah. These are my secrets. <laughs> Deo Machina says, "Can you two swap accents for a bit and see what happens?" No. Uh, yeah, I can try. We can try. Uh, what am I going to do? My American's gonna... a little rusty at the moment. I've not had to yeah. use it in a while. I can't do your accent. I'm just going to do Lady Foppington for you. <laughs> I know <Jesus>. ladies. <laughs> it just sounds like the Queen. I can do the Queen. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'll do the Queen and you do, I don't know, a cowboy. A cowboy? <laughs> but actually, it's funny you say that because in my, um, the when I had to learn an American accent for a play, I was. Uh, it was, the play was called Cowboy Mouth. It was a Sam Shepard play, and I did after play uh, a kind of rock and roll, like the character most unlike me. That's the great thing about drama school is you can play stuff you'd never get to play in real life. Mm -hmm. I got to play like a, a, an alcoholic, like bummed out cowboy rock musician drummer. <laughs> totally unlike me. Uh, but that's where I learned to do the accent. So they all sound like cool. cowboys now. Oli Madison says, Oli, do a Geordie accent. I can do a Geordie accent for you if you like. All right. That's what it sounds like. That's where I come from. <laughs> That's pretty. Yeah, I I do not have the ear for the the fine differences. Um, <laughs> like I I guess I can hear the differences, but I could not imitate them. Um, Fair enough. Yeah. I've seen I've, there's like amazing videos of people on YouTube being like 50 English accents, and they can just like fire them off. Yeah, it's weird that we do have a, like a really we have a really big density of accents. Yeah. Um, I actually, to be fair, maybe the US does as well. And my ears just aren't good enough to detect it. But here, you can get on a train for like, well, you'll know, having been to Wales, you can get on a train for half an yeah. hour. People are incomprehensible. Yeah, I mean, the US is like very different, a lot of very different accents, but there's they're more widely spaced, I guess, just to, to fill the amount of space in the in the US. Mm. Whereas, yeah, what's striking about the UK is that like you go like, yeah, it's like you can go 15 miles and it'll be different. Like, I suppose that the the English speaking people in the US have like literally like been spreading out over the course of their history. 
whereas we've always been like crammed in a tiny corner like yeah time. yeah yeah it has been longer for it to develop well yeah. in the united states it's kind of amazing like how different it is like that you managed to have like new york boston texas uh you know la um upper midwest wisconsin like alabama like all have different accents is there a baltimore accent is your is there your is. accent like noticeably something to an american um, my accent is not really Baltimore. It's not Baltimore native. I didn't grow up here. Mine is, my accent's kind of, it's kind of generic, I think. Like, it's kind of generic, um, just like vanilla American that you, you sort of like de-regionalize oftentimes when you, mm. you, when you sort of like go to university, a lot of people shed regional yeah. asp aspects of their accent. Um, my grandparents have southern my on my dad's side have southern accents. Oh cool. And my grandparents on my mom's side have Philadelphia accents, neither of which I have. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if I were to talk like my dad's mom talked, I would say hi, like Oh that's speaking so for a southern accent, yeah. <laughs> you know, we get we get taught um what's called Gen Am, general American. Mm -hmm. Um and uh the I and there are there were some Americans on my course who were like, that doesn't really sound like any American accent. And, yeah. and my accent tutor was like, yeah, it's not meant to. It's meant to sound like what a British person needs to hear in order to understand the character is American. It's not meant to be accurate. And he told us all these like really cool stories about how sometimes they fudge the accents so that they, they're like what you're expecting rather than what is accurate. So in Downton Abbey, uh, none of them would actually speak like that. They would all have like really ridiculous old fashioned accents. And the, the uh, creative team on the show made the decision that they weren't going to go for a realistic accent because it would mean that nobody can empathize with the characters because they just mm. why are they speaking this sound ridiculous. So they just made them kind of, they made them like a few years back, but not so many years back that it would have been historically accurate. So it's cool right. the way that uh, that they just, they get us to do what's expected rather than what's, uh, well, like general American rather than like realistic American. Yes, I well, and of course, like when Americans imitate English accents, it's often not an actual accent. It's just kind of a series of things that will trigger recognition of English accent to Americans. Yeah, yeah, or like a series of words. Like, may I bring on the two or whatever? I don't know. Cheerio, like, cheerio, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Kill off box. That kind of nonsense. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Which I I don't. Oh, I have heard somebody say cheerio. I've never heard somebody say toodle bit. Seriously, <laughs> I actually have heard people say cheerio. Yeah, it's a real thing. Mm. Oh, definitely, yeah. People eat crumpets. Crumpets are house. great. Why right, everyone knocks crumpets? I've had it's crumpets. <laughs> it's I've, had, I've had crumpets. Yeah. Actually, this is a place you may have been there in. Well, have you been to Cambridge? It's called the I think the Orchard. It's they have like very good tea and. Um, I think I actually have. I guess, I've not been to Cambridge that much, but I think it's like pretty famous there. I guess it's like yeah, it's famous as like a place where like Wittgenstein went and like oh, yeah. all these people and like yeah, like sit out on the grass. With I don't know about the river and yeah, there's like yeah, deck yeah, chairs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, I have been there. That is good. Good crumpets. Good yeah, time. yeah. No, it was super good. And clotted cream. That's the thing. We don't have clotted cream for some reason. Do you not have clotted cream in America? No. Which is ridiculous because it's like a super like you'd think Americans would be all over that. It's yeah, like super fatty. Have it like everything. All the stuff we love, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why we don't have it. It's, just, it's like what is clotted cream? It's like some kind of like sugary, buttery. I honestly don't know. I don't know how I'd go about making it. It's just it's, a, it's like a force of nature. They they mine it out of the ground in Dorset. Just, yeah. Like, they pump it up for fracking. And it's just <laughs> it's just naturally occurring here. It bubbles up. You're under the, under the the <laughs> Yeah, that's that's good stuff. Do we have anything? I mean, yeah, we don't have anything like that. We have cream cheese, which is not sweet. Um, is that as distinct from cottage cheese? Do you have? Cottage it's very cheese? just. Yeah, cream cheese is definitely not cottage cheese. Like cream cheese, it's has a very smooth texture. Okay. Um, you put it on bagels usually. Oh, nice. Oh wait, yeah, we have that, but well, I guess we must have imported it from from you. Yeah, yeah. The best is if you go to New York City, get. The like locks, like smoked salmon on bagels with cream cheese, um, and what else goes on it? Um, what do you call those little capers? Tomato. Ah, nice. That's, that's super good. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> that's a specifically New York thing. I am. Um, I remember I, it was last time I was in New York. I was quite young, and I met. Um, I, there was an older couple there, and we got chatting, 
and uh, they were doing a tour. They were American. They were doing a tour of both Yorks. They were doing New York and then York on our side of the Atlantic. And we were like, yeah, you really should have done it the other way around, to be honest, because I, I reckon that York, small provincial town in England with a lot of pubs and some interesting ruins, but like that's kind of about it. It's going to be a bit of a disappointment after New York City. I was like, yeah, we like, wanted to do like both Yorks. I was like, why? <laughs> yeah, that's madness. That's yeah. both Yorks. Yeah. Not knocking York. There's some great places in York. If yeah. there's anyone from York in the, um, in the chat, then big shout out to you. And the House of Trembling Madness is a fantastic pub. Um, they do this, they do this brilliant, um, this, this this pub I love in York. They do this, uh, we've gone back around to Jesus again. They do this uh, beer called Black Jesus, which they only serve in a shot glass and it's like 30% and you're only allowed to order one. It's so good. I wonder how New York got decided got, like, to be the New York, because it used to be New Amsterdam. Yeah, right? Um, I don't know why. I don't know. Somebody, somebody, somebody from York came along and was like, like hey, oh, none of this New Amsterdam shit. It's New York now. It's like, oh, all right, fine. <laughs> so there are loads of people from York in the chat, apparently. <laughs> You've just offended all of them. No, no, they're they're loving it. Someone's like Daniel Hughes says, "Woo York, nice." Is York the town with the street that has the really long and daft name, mate? That's like every town. Like, we all have that. <laughs> I noticed that that's like a thing in like towns. Is that like high? Every town has a high street. Do you not have a high street in? America? Um, I guess we do. We don't really call it a high street. Um, it's usually called Main Street in the U.S. in small towns. So uh, in the town I went to in uni, there was a, a small road that was literally called Butts Wind. Oh, my God. Yeah. W That's It's great. pronounced Wind, W-Y-N-D. But um, I'm forever skilled in the chat, says they changed it because uh, New Amsterdam was sold to the British. So I guess we changed it. We were like, fuck the Dutch. Actually, that reminds me of, of New England. So New England in the United States, like it does res resemble England more than most other places in the U.S. because it's older and it like it ha has more of that like original colonial influence. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the names in Massachusetts, for example, are just like there to an Amer American from other parts of the country. They seem preposterous, and the way that English names seem preposterous. Like there's, you know, there's places called Worcester, spelled Worcester. There's um, there's a place called Braintree for I have no idea why it's called Braintree. <laughs> Every year at the Edinburgh Fringe, I love because uh, loads of um, loads of American tourists come to the mm. fringe, and I love hearing them pronounce Edinburgh. Edinburgh, yeah. Edinburgh, it's great. But in fairness, like that, that is how it's written. It's an understandable mistake. Yeah, yeah. We have a Washington as well, not far from me in the north. I don't know why. Um, mm. I guess it's probably not that uncommon of a name. Mm. Yeah, I think it was wasn't built that long ago either, so we must have nicked it from you. Oh, uh, possible, yeah. In the U.S., I guess a lot of towns are named after like Native American names. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Um, have you ever been to? Um, have you been to New Zealand? No. It's really cool. Um, all the signs there are are, are bilingual, English and Murray. Mm -hmm. They they've made like slightly slightly more of an effort, I think, um, to incorporate the indigenous indigenous language, which is like yeah, pretty cool. Anyone from New Zealand in the chat? Hello, and also I don't know what time it is for you. It must be like. Very or early or late or tomorrow. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm always Lindsay, shocked. Lindsay was in New Zealand a while ago, wasn't she? Oh, yeah. She was there for like a few weeks to film that Hobbit video. That is the most the dedication you've ever seen put into a single YouTube video. Yeah. Well, yeah, there... I mean, yeah. Going to Japan and uh, and going into that forest is like pretty <laughs> dedicated, but I'd, I'd take True. The dedication directed towards the wrong thing. Yeah. Yeah. The dedication to, to arse hurlery. But... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's a great place, New Zealand. And it's so far that you kind of got it there for a couple of weeks, really. Um, yeah, I would like to go, although uh, I don't know how I feel about it. That's like 20 hours on a plane that you have to do to get there. Yeah, it's a long. It's, uh, when I went, it was like 30, 32, 34, 36 hours in total. Um, oh. It's a long way. But you've That's got, tough. you just stay for a long time and it's, it's fine. Um, yeah. When I, when I first went there, um, so when I was a little kid, uh, I, I really wanted to see great white sharks in the wild because I love animals and, and love diving. Um, so I went to New Zealand and on my way back, I went to this tiny little town on the south coast of Australia called Port Lincoln. And mm. I would say shout out to anyone in the chat watching from Port Lincoln, but I don't think they have internet yet. Um, so I went there and uh, the only business in the town is, is sharks. The shark watching is the only thing. And I arrived when nobody had seen a shark for a week. 
So the town was just like really tense. This it was a really like things were closed down, like people were just waiting for them to come back because they're just losing money. And I got on the taxi and the taxi driver was like, Yeah, everybody got quite excited yesterday. There's a guy who had his leg bitten off in the harbour. They took him to hospital and tested the bite. Wasn't even a great white. Even he was disappointed. Because <laughs> <laughs> they it was so weird to have them like treat animals like dangerous animals as their business. And they said, Oh yeah. Couple of weeks ago in uh, in Queensland, a girl got bitten in half. Lucky bastards! All the tourists have gone there now. It's like, oh, oh my god! Didn't see a single one. Nobody saw a single one a week either side of me being there. It was a huge waste of money and time. <sighs> um, but yeah, it was just really odd. This this like shark. It's weird shark town, Port Lincoln on the south coast. It was really. Yeah, that's one thing that does that scare me about Australia, New Zealand, South. The and wildlife is very intimidating. Yeah, Australia more than New Zealand, like New Zealand. Australia, especially those. I've seen people in Australia post their terrible spiders and stuff on Twitter. I'm just like, no, 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 yeah. no. I don't do everything, that. Everything wants to kill you there, yeah. No, I mean, New there's Zealand's parts of the United States where you can go for horrible spiders too, so. Yeah, that's true, I suppose. Southwest. Yeah. I guess Southwest. we don't really have any tarantulas in the UK. Oh, yeah, you do have tarantulas, don't you? I don't do tarantulas, yeah. Those, those, are, in the, those are in like Texas, South Texas, Southwest. Mm. Yeah. Not me, though. I remember I saw some tarantulas as I was in Belize, but no one's yeah. really seen a big one. Yeah. No, we don't really have anything like that. Yeah. Like, I think I can handle myself around a wild tarantula. I think that'll be the end of me. They're not very fast, though, in Venice. Although they do sneak up on you. Uh, I don't know. I don't like them. I don't like it. Fair enough. <laughs> Just no. Yeah. No, no one's going no to force you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't really have that here. We've got like, badgers, I guess. We do have one Venice state. Yeah, I can handle badgers. Badgers, badgers like... are great. Deal with that. But they're not even gonna. They're just gonna run away. No, we don't really have anything here that's gonna kill you. Not any bears, not any wolves. Oh what? no, we do have wolves. Somebody, I think somebody put the wolves back a while ago. I don't know. There's like three we, wild yeah. wolves. On the east coast of the U.S., that we we have lost most of the natural predators. So there's just deer everywhere because nothing kills them. Yeah, yeah. Places differ them. I know in Scotland it's absolutely rammed with deer. Yeah, yeah. Um, pay the pay the Scottish hunters to go out and. And gralak them, as they say in Scotland, which I learned a while ago is a word yeah. specifically to remove the entrails from a deer. It's like a specific word for that. Um, so I think it's just great. Yeah. In the US, well, there's a lot of people who hunt in the rural areas. Um, and sometimes this is used as justification for our gun policies, but it doesn't make much sense as it turns out, since most of these weapons that are used in like mass shootings are not really useful for hunting. Like the AR-15, like, People sometimes say, oh, you can use that to hunt wild boars. And it's like, okay. How There's many... nothing left. You're not going to get sausages out of that, but it's just like Who's trotters and a tusk. What percentage of the AR-15 owners in America are hunting wild boars? It's almost none of them. Like, yeah. the only reason to have that is that it's fun, if you like guns, to yeah. have Or one. you, like, really hate boar. You don't or even you want to eat them. You just want to die. That yeah. boar's been turned into mist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, no, this is, this, is a, this is a bad country. I'm sorry that, that you have to come here. <laughs> I mean, I'm excited about it. The food's good. Yeah, in there's no one open that's... carrying in LA, so that's at least... What's that? You're not going to see any open carry in LA. No one carries guns around. Fair. Except the police, though. Except the, well, yeah, of course, because the police are always armed. Because yeah, we just... don't have that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's going to be weird. Yeah, I'm that's excited that. about it. Uh, I remember the, the, the food's, like, the dessert is really good in America, like milkshakes. You, you oh, yeah. do milkshakes. We do we, milkshakes. We do. That's I true. had my first American milkshake in uh, in Texas, and I was like, "This is like crude oil. It was so thick." Was yeah. Like, this is how be done. This is yeah. like one thing they've got right. Oh gosh, you have, have to come, to, come, with you have to, come, come to the cheesecake factory with us. Oh yeah, definitely. It's like yeah. um, it's like if Donald Trump's apartment were a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> like as these like big like, gilded columns and things, it's it's very tacky, but like. And then the menu is like, it's like 300 pages long and you can order anything. Fantastic. I'll have to, if you come to learn of some of the city, I'll have to think of somewhere like quintessentially British that we can go. Yeah. Right, I've, I, I've got somewhere in mind that might be good. Breakfast. You guys are the best at breakfast. Really? Yeah. yeah. American breakfast with like pancakes and eggs. American and breakfast is good. I don't know. I like the whole bit. English breakfast with just full sausages and things. We do bacon as well. We do yeah. like proper, proper yeah. bacon. None of this. Yeah. Like well, greasy. Both kinds of bacon are, are justifiable. I mean, not ethically, but like gustatorially. No way. 
<laughs> Somebody in the chat says, what kind of cryptids does England have? Uh, other than me, um, there's a few others. There's, uh, there's the... Uh, what? Fairies. Oh, fairies, yeah, I guess. Arthur Conan Doyle believed in fairies. But there's um, uh, Loch Ness Monster in Scotland, obviously. Um, the Beast of Bodmin Moor down south. Nobody ever knows what that is. I think that turned out to be like an escaped panther or something. But yeah, on Bodmin Moor, they like at various points have found the remains of sheep and people are like, oh, it's the Beast of Bodmin Moor. Um, other than that, like, that's about it. It's like me and the Beast of Bodmin Moor. And yeah, that's it. We don't have Bigfoots. I mean, no one does, but we don't have. We have a lot. We have a lot of these things. Like, yeah, well, it's a big country, and it's like big country. A lot of people have been sitting around with a lot of time in their hands, and yeah, that's when these things tend to turn up. You know, like in tall tales. (laughs) Yeah. Mothman. Yeah, Mothman. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. let's go to the Cheesecake Factory. Hound of the Baskervilles. That's fictional, though. Yeah. Oh, somebody says rumored big cats in the UK. Sometimes, um, I don't think there was like a, <laughs> someone says, is Brexit a cryptid so far? Uh, yeah. So, you know, some people have gone missing. <laughs> no one's confirmed anything. Um, <laughs> what was that? That's totally thrown me off now. What was I saying? <laughs> what the, hell? Like, uh, the cryptid thing is like. Oh, yeah, yeah. So Hound of the Baskervilles was, was just made up. It's not, not based on a real, not based on a real thing. Yeah. Oh, big cats! That was it. Uh, a few years ago, yeah, some big, some big cats escaped, uh, and then there was a lion allegedly in Essex. This was a fascinating little sort of somebody could write and probably has written a dissertation on this that could play out over a whole morning. Uh, well, the whole event played out over a morning. Um, that somebody reported a lion was missing in Essex. They said, "I've seen this lion," and uh, and then like sightings of the Essex lion started coming in, and people were like, "Here it is!" Like, and it was, it was like blown up on Twitter, Essex lion. And the people were like, there it is. And there's like photos of something in a hedge. And the police were out and they were like they had helicopters looking for this escaped lion. And meanwhile, somebody sat down and was like, hang on a minute. People don't just have lions lying around. Let's call the local zoos. And they just called them. Lion, like, is, anyone, is anyone missing a lion? And then the zoos were like, no, what? One, two, no, we've got more. And they'd write, all right, call the next one. Are you missing a lion? What? No, they don't just walk out. And then they kind of gradually pieced together. This just had never happened. <laughs> but it had started off as somebody mistaken or lying and the other people have received it and have been like i've seen it and when they when the police put out the thing been like there's no lion we've checked people were yeah. like bullshit what are you covering up like i've seen yeah. it like here's a photo of like the thing in the hedge and yeah yeah it was bizarre well, that's how these work it always like things seen on the corner of your eye blurry photographs uh rumors you know and you can piece together a very real thing thing seeming thing out of all that nonsense absolutely I want to believe, says the chat. Yeah. Definitely. I'm going to get a drink real quick. Oh, go for it. Yeah. Cheers. Okay. I'll read the chat in the meantime. Yeah. Someone says, what's the American equivalent of of, uh, of Nando's? I don't know, but uh, I will conduct a, f- a field research trip when I'm in LA and I'll try and find what the uh, American equivalent of Nando's is. Go for a cheeky Nando's. <laughs> oh, best actor slash actress of all time. Um, I mean, I'm biased because my because my uh, friends are actors, um, and and so so is Natalie now apparently according to the the chat we had earlier on, um, but yeah, I I just say like my friends uh, because they're great. Um, I don't know, I uh, I do really like Patrick Stewart. I mean, he's got great range. He's just like, really good. He can do loads of different stuff. Daniel Day Lewis, yeah, yeah, he's he's a pretty nice guy. Um, I met his uh, I met his wife Rebecca Miller a while ago. She came and gave us a talk, um, and it, funnily enough, um, one of Daniel Lewis's mates uh, was my acting teacher. Um, so yeah, he's, apparently he's, he's like a really lovely guy. Um, yeah. Someone says, "What's your favorite type of cat?" It's a draw between Sphinx and Maine Coon. There you go. Uh, what are you drinking? It's still slow gin. Christopher Lee, very good actor. Very good actor, August Denny's or Denies, says in the chat that Christopher Lee is their favorite actor. Funnily enough, uh, when he got back from the war, he he said he wanted to be an actor and he was told he would never do it because he was too tall. And he was subsequently in more films than any other person ever. So there you go. <laughs> do you like musicals? Yeah, occasionally. I'm not as into musicals as a, as uh, as I could be. 
I'm not a musical theatre actor. Um, there are some people in the UK we call them we call them triple threats who can who can act, sing, and dance. Um, I'm I'm not one of them. Um, I mean, I I can sing and dance, um, but not well enough to like be in a show that is about singing and dancing. You know, um, you're not going to see me in like Chicago or something. But you might see me in uh, As You Like It or Midsummer Night's Dream if there's a song and a dance. You know, I can, I can, I can handle it. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's um, I can, yeah. Oh, apparently there are people are coming up with all kinds of cryptids in the chat. Apparently, England's absolutely rife, rife with cryptids. But stiff with them. I'm going to go outside later on and just see sort of hundreds and hundreds of them. But no. Um, Somebody says, "Are you in a party?" No, I'm just. It's just me here. It's just me alone. Um. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think I am going to sing. I'm not warmed up for one thing. Gary Oldman, yeah, um, I've heard he's good. Yeah, I've never seen him live. Funnily enough, um, don't know if he does any theatre actually, but yeah. Hmm. What did you think of Patrick Stewart in the Emoji movie? I have uh, no, I've not seen that, um, but like that just speaks to Pat Stu's versatility. I think that he can do voiceover like that, and like he can do Waiting for God on Monday, Emoji Movie on Tuesday, you know, uh, Hamlet on Wednesday. Um, oh, I'm gonna go and see Hamlet at the Globe in July. I'm really, really excited. Um, Jimmy Garnon's playing Claudius. Um, he's a really nice guy. Uh, he's a friend of my my cousins, and I, I wanted to go and see him. Like, I'm really excited for that. Yeah, it's really good. And the last thing I saw at the Globe was um, was King Lear. Yeah, it's um, it's pretty decent, and I can't remember the name of the lead actor now, but he's um, he's uh, oh man, he's in uh, Valkyrie, that Tom Cruise film, and he's in uh, Conspiracy. He always like plays a Nazi or a pirate, and he was he was Mr. Gibbs in Pirates of the Caribbean, and I saw him playing King Lear. <laughs> Sorry, we're just like chatting about uh, London theatre now because people just wanted to do um, to ask me of like. Uh, to ask me about Shakespeare and stuff. Do I have oh. a favourite Shakespearean role? Mark Antony and Julius Caesar. Yes, definitely. My number one. Wakes up with a hangover, goes to bed as one of the three rulers of the world. What a day. I'm thinking of doing a little bit of Shakespeare, not very much. In my next video, some illusions. Really? Yeah. I wanna, so I have like a Midsummer Night's Dream kind of thing in mind because... Um, well, I don't want to give away too much, no, but, no, no. but um, I've got a costume I'm making that's very like uh, fairy queen aesthetic, uh, Titania, yeah. like Titania um, or yeah, Puck or something. Mm. And I would well, have cast you more Titania than Puck if I, if yes. I had the choice. I've seen I've seen Puck played very like very female. Hmm. Well, I've only ever seen Puck played like really like high energy and and there's not yeah sort of I don't do that. Noble. That's true. <laughs> I saw um, a, I saw a brilliant Midsummer at the Globe. Uh, this must have been at least a year ago. Where um they because I've usually seen Oberon and indeed have have played Oberon. Mm. I played him like poorly because I was like seventeen. But as this sort of very like oh yeah like Elrond basically. Mm. Um, and they play they had in the one I saw at the Globe. He was just like a just like a drunk loser. He's just like oh, this super powerful magic yeah. magician, like so ground down by the demands of Titania. They're just like fuck, just like drunk and just like blasting. Because he's, he's, like, like, he's like falling off the stage, and... and he's like he's scheming, and he's doing things that are like not super dignified for like an Elrond figure. Yeah, he's, just they strange. just played him as like kind of a bitter, <laughs> bitter like, old it's man. It's hard. To, it's hard to imagine like. Elrond being like, yeah, I want you to drug my ex-wife, like, that's... Yeah, 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 it is actually, that's quite petty for, for yeah, Elrond. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't think Hugo would have, uh, would have, would have played no, him if, um... I don't think so. <laughs> it was, well, oh, maybe, I don't know. He's, he's, he's like, he's out of range. Hugo? Yeah. Yeah, he's class, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a cool guy. Um, you know, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert? Yeah, I saw him, um, I saw him as Vladimir waiting for Godot in, um, mm. in London. At the barbican he was like it was amazing like just the the physical the the like physical acting of it was so cool he was he was always like agitated and like wasn't stopping and and was always like twitching around and then at the very end when the when the second child comes on and says godo's like not coming he's just like 
he just dropped and, and it was like oh my god he's been doing that this whole time because if he stays still for a moment the horror of it all just hits him and it was just an incredible physical performance and i i was i got to chat to him afterwards and i was like yeah it was like it was really like amazing and it was like oh yeah yeah glad you noticed thanks a lot <laughs> Yeah, that's funny yeah i never know what to say i never i don't have anything to say to anything with people because i have like i don't know what to say to them so i just be like i like the thing you do like i don't know i just don't that's what i'm gonna be like on thursday <laughs> yeah yeah well yeah that's kind of what everyone's like though youtubers for me at least you, i don't respect any youtuber enough to completely lose my mind like <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to like be more like that but now that i do it myself i'm like yeah yeah whatever these are just people um and that's makes it more easier i think uh, mm, fair to enough. like you can just I guess with youtube it's like it's like peers isn't it or it feels exactly like that's what it feels like to me right mm. yeah like, at that stage i like haven't even i hadn't even trained uh so i i obviously was a little bit in awe um yeah yeah oh there's like a few actors who if i met them i would be like i would absolutely be starstruck yeah um, <laughs> just yeah. despite myself who oh that's a good question danny devito i would <laughs> if I nice, met danny good choice DeVito, i would uh <laughs> i thought of him because i just saw this amazing picture of him wearing a democracy now hat at a pride parade <laughs> nice and so i'm like oh my god danny devito is a woke bay nice excellent uh he yeah woke bay. i love him <laughs> yeah yeah he's cool i like him i like his voice over work yeah um, there might be some there might be some uh people coming to the show i mean in july that i can't say on stream but if you remind me on wednesday because i'm i'm like i'm i'm bricking it a little bit the people who might turn up to come and see this thing um because it's it, the show is going to be on at at rada the the kind of big drama school in london it's um the one that like tom hiddleston went to and, and everyone so um yeah yeah it's gonna be a it's gonna be an interesting show um when is that uh it's on uh early july uh i can't mm -hmm. say on the stream when the exact what exactly yeah, yeah. i want to reserve tickets for for industry but um because it's mm -hmm. like very limited run uh it's like only 100 tickets um, mm -hmm. two shows and uh one of them's already sold out which is awesome wow. um but yeah oh and uh and and full full disclosure for the chat because obviously my life is crowdfunded uh i'm not being paid for this role so it's not like I'm. I've got Patreon. I'm also like raking in millions on the side. No, I'm doing this. <laughs> doing this work pro bono. Um, just want to be up, up, and personal about that. Um, somebody says, "What is this stream about?" I mean, clues in the title. It's it's uh, me, about me subscribers, we subscribers, yeah, and and me chatting to Nat and being nervous about meeting her on Thursday. Um, <laughs> well, no, I'm not very scary. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, neither is neither is Hugo when he looks like a like. That's wait, true. Got it. Oh, he, yeah. I think he's scary. Than me. Oh, he's lovely. Yeah. He's really lovely. I'd met him before that as well. He's really nice. Oh, um, really tall, very tall man. Interesting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm kind of nervous to meet you. <laughs> oh, I I hope not. I don't. It's I don't think it's so awkward. <laughs> Oh, I hope not. I think it's going to be fun. It will be fun. Yeah. It will be fun. <laughs> It'll be less awkward than this is right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's just because I've been drinking. No um, audience. No audience. I'm trying to count. I'm getting caught up. Wait, what time is it for you? It's 4.30 in the afternoon. In the afternoon. Yeah. Nice. Benefits of being oh. a YouTuber. It's always yeah, time. It's, it's getting to be a reasonable time to start drinking. <laughs> I mean, it's not... Definitely, yeah. Why not? I was saying it. Um, I was saying at the start, I hardly ever do anymore, so I'm just mm -hmm. to a lightweight. I definitely drink less than I used to. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it helps to be the correct gender and <laughs> to just mm. be more comfortable socially in general. Definitely, um, yeah. I still enjoy it, but yeah, mm. not good to. I'm also, you know, <laughs> getting in my late twenties, close to thirty. It's time to start thinking about not dying. <laughs> Yeah, and the two day, the two day hangover. Right. I'm yeah. Looking yeah. forward to it. I that's know right. it's real. I, that's that's. I thought that was a cryptid, but it's mm. not. It's a, mm -hmm. apparently it's a real beast. Um, yeah. I, I know yeah, it's, yeah. it's waiting for me someday. Yeah, I I still haven't, I'm still not at that point, but it is worse than it used to be. Um, and like so, so I've, I've gotten way better. Like when I was in my early, I was a mess in my early twenties. Like, 
I used to, but but the thing is like I used to be able to be a mouse with no consequences. Like I could just be like, you know, room spinning, drunk, go to bed. And the next day, I'd be like, yeah, fine. Um, yeah, it just went. Not through. anymore. So now yeah. I have to not do that. Um, also, a... my tolerance has just gone to nothing because yeah. I think because I don't drink as much, and also possibly estrogen related. So now mm, I have to drink. Like, so I'm like, oh yeah, like it's mm. which is probably for the best. Yeah, you have to put, like pace the night marathon, not yeah, sprint. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I remember um, in Newcastle we start drinking really early, um, and I guess in in England we start drinking like three years before. You, I mean, mm. I know presumably everyone in the US drinks under twenty one anyway, but uh, I guess with us it's even sooner. Um, so I used to be able to just drink like a fish at uni. Um, I remember once we I was in a I was in a production of uh, Macbeth and at the cast party the guy playing Macbeth brought Everclear the like ninety ninety eight percent stuff and like one shot of that is like eight shots yeah and it's yeah I, yeah I got absolutely rat assed on that Ooh. and I woke up the next morning and I was like totally fine and I was like this is a miracle this is some some kind of like and I, I lived in fear that like at some point just randomly I'd be walking along the street and that hangover would come back and it was just like delayed. It had been yeah. like cast into the future, yeah. and I would like just in the middle of the day just be like, oh, just like shrivel up like the end of Indiana Jones. Actually, I think that click drinking with clear liquor like that is actually the least. It's it's like that's because I found that like the times I've gotten like so drunk I went, went unconscious and I woke up and was fine. It's usually gin that does that to me. Oh, nice. Like, I've made a few errors involving Bombay Sapphire. That <laughs> great gin, great <laughs> which is great. Stuff. Which involved there a, like there was a gin society in my uni, and that was always my that was my oh my choice. gosh, that is the most English thing I've ever heard. But I yeah, know, I know <laughs> gin society. Yeah, um, it was but, so horrible as well. It's like the most. It was like I suppose now you would call it like toxic masculinity. But in order mm. to get in, I had to do uh, a shot of gin, a gin and tonic, and a bowl of gin and milk in thirty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry, gin and milk? It's vile. Don't do it. It doesn't. It doesn't taste uh, good. Do the other two first, otherwise you'll yeah, ruin it. But, right. Um, but yeah. That is toxic masculinity. It was, it was. Gin and milk is toxic masculinity. It is, it is. Uh, next time you do the thing in the bath, just put some gin oh, in Oh, some it. gin in the milk, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> somebody Actually, says, I... somebody in the chat says, David Cameron, is that you? And I imagine that's a reference oh, to that. But funnily David enough... David Cameron has, has drunk some gin and milk. Yeah, he's he's done a lot of things drunk, David Cameron. Um, the story with the pig's head springs to mind. But funnily enough, I did once get asked to audition to play the role of David Cameron back when he was um Ooh. back when he was prime minister, uh, and uh, I was <laughs> this this was I was relatively relatively early in my YouTube career. But um, somebody a director saw me in a play and said, "Hey, I'm doing this web show that's going to be uh, it's going to be making fun of David Cameron. Do you want to play him?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure, I'll audition." Um, and she and uh, so the director in her in her work played a very very right wing character, um, what I would now recognise as being an alt right character, but didn't quite have that name yet. So she played that character, and it was kind of being like making fun of David Cameron, or so I thought, because I didn't get the role, but she ended up playing it herself. Interestingly, but later on I found I found her personal Twitter and found that like, it wasn't a character, and that she was just like a neo Nazi. And she was making fun of David Cameron from the right, being oh, like, no. "You're like, cucked," and like, "You've oh been like, cucked by Thatcher." And and I was just like, "Wow, that was nearly my first job." Oh my I'm God. really glad. I'm really glad I didn't do that. And she was like, "We," and it put so many things in different contexts because we had a Skype interview, and um, when she was considering me for the role, and she was like, "You know, it's a political." show uh where where do you kind of lean politically just so i can get a rough indication i was like well you know like pretty vague but usually like further left than a man it's just had his left leg burn off she was like oh right that's kind of interesting yeah i was, like, didn't seem to be the right answer um because yeah. i assumed that everyone who works in in certainly british theater is like huh. at liberal at minimum usually usually yeah, yeah. that's usually a safe bet yeah um, but no she was just she was a neo-nazi and i was like wow dodged a bullet like yeah it could have been my first job um so yes the person who made fun of my hair for looking like david cameron uh well yeah gladly happily i don't look too much like david cameron otherwise i could have been in had a very different career <laughs> well yeah i think yeah you could have, your first role could have been cocked david cameron that's true well i <laughs> i think that Probably you're safe because of the left of center self ID. So like, 
It sounds like this person is not going to cast someone like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, thankfully. Well, she did end up playing it herself and, and did oh. quite a better David Cameron impression than I could have done. And oh. she, she Kenneth Branagh it. She, she wrote, directed, and starred. Um, and I don't think it ever got much traction, but yeah. Yeah, usually neo-Nazi productions or someone plays David Cameron don't get that much traction. Yeah, it's just like not a mainstream somehow. It's no. not a mainstream, mainstream thing. Um, but yeah. I'm going to commit um, to a color. I'm tired of this color changing. <laughs> <laughs> I like that warm color, that like. Mm, the red. Know. Yeah, that like. Oh, wait, oops, that's the wrong one. Um, so Ben asks, what are both of your opinions on philosophy degrees? I mean, I'm ah. honestly like reasonably, reasonably pro having done one, but um, I don't know about you. What are my opinions? Um, I think as an undergraduate major, it's great. Oh, was, it really... your, uh, was it your undergrad major? Yeah, philosophy and psychology. Oh, nice. Um, the, the, the Jordan Peterson twin combo. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have any philosophy credentials. No. Not really. Um, but I, I think that I loved doing philosophy as an undergraduate, and I thought that it, that actually helps you think about like other topics. It actually teaches you interesting ways of thinking about mm. any kind of problem that you want to think about. And there's something really incredibly useful I think about studying the history of philosophy, because I think Bertrand Russell is something, something very similar to this in defense of why you should do it. But like, I think he little quote is something along the lines of like, you know, reading Aristotle, like you enter into the mind of this person who's like incredibly intelligent, who's thought very, very deeply about the world, and yet is from a modern perspective, basically wrong about everything. Yeah. So it's this, it's like this practice, like seeing like, how could an, a person way smarter than you have thought all this stuff? So you, it's, it's a practice like adopt, like it's a kind of intellectual empathy, I guess, where mm. you kind of like, enter into you, you look at the world just provisionally right i'm going to practice looking at the world the way someone else looks at the world and then understand what's wrong with that but from the the you know a perspective of having really sympathized with it for a while yeah and i think that is and it's a thing most people don't do and it's it's one reason i think why a lot of times you know political discussions online or whatever like they get nowhere because people can't even understand why anyone else thinks the way they do we think that and, as, and also i guess are vulnerable to believing their own so when they say i believe this yeah. because of xyz i think people often take that at face value rather than going yeah. hang on a minute this doesn't make sense and like being critical about it i i think studying philosophy has made me more argumentative though i was mm -hmm. in a <laughs> i had a totally inappropriate argument a while ago and i was just sitting on this guy i'd like just met at a social thing and he was set, he was trying to argue that it was like immoral to ride horses and I was like, I got like way too into it. Be like, why though? He was like, we well, wouldn't ride an elephant. And I was like, people ride elephants. Like, what? He's like, well, you wouldn't ride a dolphin. And I'm like, but like, they're not domesticated. And I just ended up like, and everyone else was like, just let it go. Like, uh, but like, I can't. <laughs> it's just, I'm interested. That's why. That's why you would be a philosophy major because that that personality that gravitates towards philosophy. I think. Yeah, that kind of curiosity. But then I suppose also I was like, I was taught that as well. I didn't really do yeah. philosophy. Um, I suppose I was like curious about it a little bit, but I just did it because I was like good at it in school and, and I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, well, I did, but I didn't know I could actually go and be an actor. Um, and yeah, my philosophy teacher at the time was just like, try, try doing that. So sort of fell into it really, just like YouTube. Mm -hmm. What made you start doing YouTube? Um, I had sort of done it on and off, like very amateurishly for years. Um, both like, or I used to upload piano videos, I play the piano. And I used to upload just like bad quality vlogs about things I was thinking about when I was an undergraduate. I never really went anywhere. I just stopped for a couple of years altogether. And then I kind of, two, about two years ago, a little more than two years ago, just kind of like hit rock bottom with my life. and was like, well, I have no plan for what I'm doing. So let's just do YouTube as a last resort. <laughs> and then that just- Nice. <laughs> It just took off, yeah. I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, like it's yeah. Sometimes so you just have to fail at a bunch of things, and then the last thing you try. Well, obviously, the last thing you try is the thing that works. So you stop trying new things when the thing works. But um, 
fail you know, into success. You have to fail at a bunch of things before you succeed at a thing. It yeah. was my experience. Was it? Um, were you? Did you channel still called contrapoints then, or did it have a different? Were you like the rash? Um, I did make videos a long time ago under the heading contrapoints, and I had a different. There was a different name for a few other channels that I had before. Oh, nice. Which we shall not discuss. Yeah. <laughs> What about you? Um, I was at uni and I was um, I was doing a lot of stand up at the time mm. for, for kind of unrelated reasons. But um, I, I, a girlfriend at the time said um, you should put your stand up on YouTube, and uh, I'd never really thought about it. And uh, I, um, I watched a little bit of YouTube, but not that much. And I, uh, but the idea of having a YouTube channel kind of stuck with me. And then I thought, um, and then separately to that because I was in the last year to to pay the old tuition fees before the government tripled them, I was really upset by that and was like, this is kind of bullshit. I had friends who couldn't go to uni who wanted to. Yeah, um, it's awful. So I just kind of sort of put those two together. And I was like, what if I just took what I'm learning in uni and just put it on YouTube for free so that people could, mm -hmm. they wouldn't have to come to lectures. They could just like learn it. Um, and I initially just thought of just like filming the lecture and I was like, I'm sure that's theft. So I'll just yeah. su summarize it. Um, yeah. And then at the end of day one, it had 100 subscribers. And I was like, oh, well, wow. I'm kind of onto something here. Um, yeah, it was just the kind of combination of uh, maybe I should do YouTube as like a platform to reach a lot of people. And that I, I believe in free education and want people to have it and to give away my degree for free. Um, so, yeah. Somebody says, I want to see Philosophy Tube do stand up. There is a video of me somewhere on YouTube doing stand up. I'm going to watch this later. Yeah, I'll send you the link. I'll, I'll, I'll review it first. It might be. I think I'm very overweight and have very long hair in that video. But yeah, I, I got into stand up for, for bad reasons. Um, oh. So we at, at, at drama school, we had this, we had a, a class, and it's going to sound very sort of actor wanker, but um, we had a class about examining our relationship to laughter. And. Um, I, I realized in that class that I'd gotten into stand up sort of for the for the wrong reasons. And uh, I because I auditioned for the university improv troupe the week I arrived in Scotland and I didn't get in. And I saw a week later they were judging an improv contest and I was like, I'm going to show you. They were judging a, a stand up contest. And I said, I'm going to show you. I'm going to come along and I win that contest. And I did. Um, and then after that, I just started doing it as a, as a way of showing off, really. Just be like, I can write the most clever, the most esoteric joke the joke that'll make the comedians laugh but the audience won't get and like it was just not really very healthy and didn't make me very happy so yeah. as soon as i had that class at drama school i was just like oh wow i like i don't need to prove that anymore i can just let that go and i haven't haven't done it since but that video is still out there so i'll i'll see if i can send it to you later on yes i hope i would really like to see it <laughs> i've never done stand up i've thought about it yeah it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun i'd, I'd recommend it, it if anyone out there is so gonna try it it's so stressful yeah, I guess. Yeah, it, I, I remember it being tough. The, if I had a lot of time to prepare, I enjoyed it. If I suddenly was like, "You've got it's a gig on Friday," I'd be like, "Oh crap!" I need to like write some some of the, like weird stuff. But um, yeah, I enjoyed it. My my brother does it as as his job, mm. and uh, and some of his friends do as well. And uh, yeah, it's it's difficult, but I think it can be very rewarding. Um, I don't know. I imagine the scene is very different in um in America than it is here. Um, yeah, I I know some people who are comics in the U.S. I don't know what it's like in the U.K., mm. but in the U.S., I don't know. It's very difficult, very, very difficult to make an actual living doing it. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of, I know I know a lot of people who sort of, I guess I know a couple of people who do it professionally. Mm. It's, yeah. It's, I think here it's still a little, I, I'm happy to be correct if anyone out there knows different, but the impression I get is that it can be a bit of an old boys club here. Oh, um, still to I was certain, about to say that to it's incredibly a boys club here and it's oh, very right. difficult for anyone who's not a white man, basically. Um, like, is it still like Harvard Lampoon is still? Yeah, it's um, it's just very, it's very bro -y, I guess is what I would say mm. about it. Like, I mean, I don't even go to comedy shows most of the time because like mm. the chance of it just like the chance of comics just taking things in a very transphobic direction is so high. I just don't feel like putting up with it. Yeah, why, why would you risk? Why yeah. would you risk it? I know, and I know a couple people who are trans and do comedy, but like I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they do it. Mm. Yeah, kudos to them. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just a, it's a very lazy thing to make jokes about, in my opinion. 
Um, which is too bad because there actually are hilarious jokes about being trans. It's just that most of the people who make those jokes don't know those jokes. They don't know anything yeah. about being trans, so they can't joke about it effectively. But inside baseball, yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Dan Man, nineteen fifty, says uh, Ollie was overweight. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was. Um, I was like quite, quite, quite a lot overweight about six months before drama school. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I was. Um. In fact, if I put that comedy video out later, then you, then you'll then you'll see it. Um, you mentioned losing a third of your body weight. That's quite dangerous. Yeah, it was. I did it in a very dangerous way as well. Yeah. It was like, yeah, very unhealthy. I wouldn't wouldn't recommend yeah. it. But um, yeah, I wouldn't want to do it again. Um, I've like basically put that weight back on again in the last six months, but in in muscle, which is nice. Um, that's good to have. And I'm saying. Now. The lead man muscle. Yeah, yeah. Like it's it's amazing how it's like changed the my casting. Um, yeah, it's wonderful. Hopefully, I can keep it, and uh, hopefully, people at VidCon will be suitably suitably impressed. I, I'll be impressed. I'm already impressed. <laughs> You're very very sweet. Thank you. Um, I think maybe in about 15 minutes, I might wrap it up and uh, and have a cup of tea because it's That's getting good. late here. But uh, if anyone wants to chuck in any any last uh comments or anything here's your 15 minute warning anyway um the chat will go chat will go wild now because people want the questions um but yeah yeah it's how, how long is the flight for you from baltimore oh it's not bad at all it's about um i think it's, it's like going from it's about six hours i think it's, it's it's longer actually going in the west direction than the east direction because of the gulf stream or something yeah yeah Lucky. But yeah, it's not. It's, no, it's not bad. It's about like a transatlantic flight. It's about the same. Um, oh really? Like, it's like a, it's are you flying? Dr- are you flying direct? Yeah, from, yeah. Like, Heathrow to LAX. It's like eleven. How long hours. is that? Yeah, eleven. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, but that's yeah. that's that's a hard flight. Yeah, and then I I come back to England on the twenty sixth, mm. and I'm straight back in rehearsals on the twenty seventh because we just oh. don't have any we don't have any time to waste. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah. In fact, I nearly didn't. I nearly didn't get this role because I, um, on the audition form they were like, um, "Are there any dates you're not available?" And I had to be like, "Yeah, I'm at VidCon on these dates." Yeah, and the yeah. lady was like, oh, "I'm just like, can I give you the role?" And I was like, "If it helps, I'm a YouTuber, so I'm like free all day during the day. Like, you don't have to work around a nine to five. And she's like, "Okay, fine." So, yeah, that was <laughs> yeah. Um, good. Well, have lots of fun at VidCon. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I hope to. I, yeah, I'm looking at some of the itinerary, and there's some like interesting looking panels, I think. Mm. Um, and the Cheesecake Factory now, which I'm now looking forward to most of all. Um, yeah, is, is seeing so, a restaurant that looks like. And we're food. definitely going to prom, are we? Yeah, I hope so. If you if you can make it, if not, we'll have our happen. own. We'll have I can make prom. it happen. I can make it happen. Um, I <laughs> I don't have I don't have a ticket now, but I can either get a ticket that I need to, or I can I can make a case to, yeah. to certain. Parties. We'll 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 have some version of a prom. I've never been yeah. to a prom, so yeah. I don't really know what it entails. We don't really have them here. Um, I don't know what YouTube prom entails. <laughs> no, is... I think it's it's I think it's like sponsored by Twix. Uh-huh. It's called the Twix prom. Twix so you have prom. to like pick whether you're left Twix or right Twix, and then like I maybe we should this... make our own prom. <laughs> but but the, like they are also doing a king and queen, so. Oh. Oh. We we could we could try. Good, that would be so cool. Queen King and Queen Twix. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> King of Twix. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put that on your resume. What's that? Put that on your resume. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the role I've played is the Twix King. Yeah. My lord, <laughs> Somebody says go as alt right Twix. No. No. <laughs> Goes far left Twix. <laughs> anti anti <laughs> <the> Twix. <laughs> Dark chocolate. <laughs> yeah, apparently, according to some people in the chat, some UK schools do have proms now. Well, not in not in my day, you young whippersnappers with your proms. <laughs> my day of like just a few years ago. <laughs> um, we didn't have proms at uni. We had people will laugh. We had balls. That's what mm. they were called. Um, yeah. We had like welly ball and glitter ball, and we had a circus ball one year as well. Yeah. I found both your channels after changing my major from theatre to philosophy. Oh, what a switch! Should have gone the other way, but fair enough. Um, <laughs> we need prom vids. Yeah, 
yeah, I hope that was prom and not not a typo. Um, yeah, if we can if we can do <laughs> if we could do prom videos, then then we will. Um, I'm sure there'll be pics. <laughs> definitely, yeah, definitely, be good fun. Well, I've not caught this outfit for nothing. You've yeah. got to apparently you've got to go in in um, you've got to go in either red or gold, and I was That's... like, well. Na- whatever Nat's going in is going to be spectacular. So I'd better, you know, pull pull it out the bag and and go for something good. So, yeah. we'll are you red or gold? <laughs> You're gonna find out. Oh, you gonna ah. find out when I pick you up. <laughs> Get a limo and then no. <laughs> Co- corsage something. I don't know. Um, will I be vlogging VidCon? Uh, I'll probably record something if I can. Uh, probably the same way I do Sitsi. I'll probably like vlog it at the time and then go back and edit um, later on. I probably won't do it live. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. Wait, somebody's... Oh, oh Philosophy Jew, how old are you? I'm uh, 25, just. Just to turn 25 at the end of April. Um, I know I don't look it. I look a little older. Um, it's the beard. If I shaved it off, you'd think I was like babies. Something. What? I'm surrounded by babies. Oh, <laughs> I look older. <laughs> You're 29. Yeah, yeah. It's a good age, though. That's like a cool age. People will take you seriously when oh, yeah. you're 29. So uh, everyone I know is getting married. It's uh... oh. Sean turned 30 before me. That's. Oh my gosh, he did. Yeah, happy birthday to Sean. By the way, yeah. if he's out there, I imagine he's uh, celebrating. Not, um, I'm sure, not watching, yeah, not watching our stream, but, but happy enjoying. birthday, just in case. Happy birthday, happy birthday, old chap. <laughs> he's a legend. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, he just like, he just does the homework, like yes. the amount of effort, and, re- and he's just like every single step. He's just like yeah. so methodical. It's brilliant. He's great. Um, oh, so I'm glad somebody asked this. Somebody says, "What is your sign?" What, and I'm wondering, like, why has astrology made this comeback? And I have no idea why. It seems to be everywhere now. It's like a gay thing. I don't know. Is it? Yeah, that's like a lot of um, LGBT people love astrology. I'm not no. one of. I'm a. I'm a woman of science. Not really, but but uh, but I never really got into astrology. Science of Marxism. No. I'm a um, Libra for whatever that counts as. Not much, probably. And uh, and I know that a lot of people will want to go and check the compatibility charts on that. So I'm oh, a Taurus. Just to be safe, we probably should. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm a Taurus. So uh, somebody let us know whether that's going to work, and if not, yeah, and if we not, well, it's all canceled. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I think um, I might put the uh, I might put the kettle on. I'm going to have a cup of tea. Um, so thanks for coming along. Well, yeah. first of all, thank you to you. Um, Thanks for having me. No, my pleasure. Uh, and I will see you on uh, Thursday. Yeah, see you next week. If not Wednesday. All right. Um, yeah. Thank you to everyone in the chat for coming along. Uh, um, yeah, I'll, I'll be sticking around in the live chat for just a little bit more to answer any more questions if anyone has them. But thank you. And thank you for supporting the show to 200,000 subs. I, wow. I think if I get to 250, I get like a little... I get a little thing, uh, a golden thing. So that's, yeah, I, I can't believe it. Thank you all um, so much. I love this job. <laughs> all right, take care. Have a lovely evening. Uh, hopefully see lots of you at VidCon and see you on Thursday. Bye.